I'm going to need you guys to, uh, I'm going to need you to go ahead and subscribe down below or WWE is going to get a whole hell of a lot worse than this. So subscribe down below, hit the like button, and we're going to hear from you guys with what you thought of Monday Night Raw tonight. The Firefly Funhouse, it's just resurrected. Seth Rollins doesn't turn heel against Harambe, Puerto Rico, and the crowd hates themselves as Kevin Owens is the third man that could have been in the match from the beginning but wasn't there, and everything I heard tonight was retarded. Like uh, Dio Dumbass, who told uh, one of the Street Profits to make himself a legend at the end of Raw because he hit his finishing move to win a Raw match. Apparently, now you can become a legend if you hit a splash from the top rope. Please put acid in my eyeballs and slowly murder me as you hold my family over a fire while I'm forced to watch. And for all the football fans out there who thought Monday Night Football could be exciting, instead, you literally watched what Raw did to its fans tonight. You watched the Patriots do to the Jets what Raw did to all the wrestling fans tonight. That's right. You watched the Patriots rape the Jets. Over 50 million views. You're listening to The Joe Cronin Show. The Joe Cronin Show. The Joe Cronin Show. I hope you hang your mother. This country sucks. This place sucks. CNN masturbated all fucking day. You watch the Patriots. Dude, I will eat your fucking asshole out and then spit it into your mouth, baby bird style. Who wants to go? Call the show. I'll fuck your ass! I wanna kill myself! The Joe Cronin Show. Welcome into the Monday Night Raw review. I guess we have to do this. I guess I have to do this. Please, uh, if you were ever to sign up for audibletrial.com, uh, make sure you use my code, audibletrial.com slash JCS. 
you will get a free audiobook. I recommend Chris Jericho! He reads his own audiobook. It's quite the amusement to listen to. You won't be disappointed! I promise. AudibleTrial.com slash JCS. JCS means Joe Cronin Show, not Jim Cornette Sucks. I know that a lot of people think it also means Jim Cornette Sucks. That is true. It does indeed also mean that. I will admit it. Um, all right. This is Wardlow. Yo, Wardlow, what up? From AEW, and you're watching The Joe Cronin Show. A wrestling podcast with attitude. Hell yeah, motherfucker. What up, Wardlow? When are you ever going to debut in uh, AEW, man? I feel like the Wardlow debut is a full WWE move right now. That guy is being held off so long, he's not going to mean shit when he does show up. It's a total WWE move by AEW because he is just... Yikes. Talk about killing the uh, anticipation, it feels like. I don't think it's doing... I think it's doing... Maybe they thought it's the opposite. I, I think it's the other way around. But whatever. It's classic... Uh, AEW just wants to be a little bit like WWE. I can understand that. Who would want? Who wouldn't want to be like a company that's a piece of shit right now? Um. Anyway, Jake DeMarco. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, brother? Uh, the start to the show, I I enjoyed. I thought it was a, a great way to kick off Raw. Honestly, yeah. You made Drew McIntyre's re return feel important. We haven't seen him, you know, close to two months, so that was well. That was I don't know if it felt important, but. Well, the fact that he's going to be on Team Flair. Flair was off his exactly. rocker. Exactly. You just proved the point right there. Who gives a shit? Well, I mean, it's better than what they usually do, where they bring somebody back. Uh, you know, it's anticlimactic, and there's no real fanfare to it. At least they tried. I, I, I don't give a shit about Crown Jewel, neither do you or most of the audience, but at least they tried to make it seem like a big deal. Yeah, they so, tried something. Yeah, that's true. I, I I know what they were going for. Typically, you'll you'll get him to return, you know, or whoever returns, and they do this dominant squash match. Yep. And that wasn't it. We got a almost. It was an eighteen minute match. I think it was like nearly twenty minutes. I know that. Not many. Well, not many commercials. That was good. And it because... was a really good match. Him and Ricochet, you know, tore it down. It wasn't a squash like you usually get when these guys return, especially right. the heels. No, that was good because like he needed to have a match that was like a legitimate fight with somebody instead of just. And Bolo that headbutt and the DDT looked brutal after the match. I mean, you know, that you got that whole beat down. It almost made it seem like they were going to write Ricochet off for Crown Jewel the way he was destroying him. But I don't know though, man. I, like, and I've, then you got McIntyre doing the the Hulk Hogan poses, mocking. You know, it, like it was just it was it was really but you know I'm actually, entertaining. I think I might be going the other way on this one. I couldn't believe. Like, I almost feel like like Ricochet and Drew McIntyre should be at a pay per view. And instead, Drew McIntyre should have probably just beat the shit out of somebody. But I, I don't know. I mean, I don't. It was a good match, though. I liked what we got. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, know, either way, compared to what they usually give us, this was enjoyable. Sad thing is, it's all for naught with Crown Jewel being the main focus. It, it, it's funny. I know you said it before, and and you mentioned it last week, but the difference a year makes. I mean, you couldn't even utter the word Saudi last year. Now it's said. You know, on repeat and freely. Well, first they were saying it a bunch, and then they couldn't say. I mean, you know, they fucking yeah, they, 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 they hacked a guy into pieces. I mean, <laughs> bone saw is ready. So yeah. Uh, but I liked the intro. I was like, damn, this is a, a decent start. It's not amazing, but it was entertaining. I, I, I'm, you know, a big fan of McIntyre. They made him feel important here. The good beat down afterwards. Good, good work between the two. It was just a strong, enjoyable match. And then the next three hours happened. Yeah, <laughs> or felt, two hours and forty minutes. I felt the same left. way. I was like, okay, that's what else we got now. Cool. And they gave us nothing to the end. I will say, I did like the beginning and I liked the end and everything else. Did you know I burnt your house down when I you hated fell asleep the, watching Raw? I did, Joe. I burnt uh, your. Oh, you already rebuilt it. I hated the ending too, though. I mean, I, like, dude, <laughs> like, like, can I just fucking? What are they fucking doing? Oh, we're gonna have this mystery partner oh but we don't have one so now it's a two on two but here's the mystery partner like what was instead the of two on three yeah because it was supposed to be i thought a six-man tag the way they booked it it makes no fucking sense dude you wouldn't say like so it oh. should have been two on three the whole time then. no it should have been it should have been two on two knowing that there that there's a they're outnumbered though they yeah. have a two on two match they know they're outnumbered and they go well you know something we we know that we're outnumbered tonight in in this tag team match, but the fact of the matter is, we know we can still come out on top. And hell, 
we might actually have an equalizer for exactly. you guys. And then like, okay, so and then when Owens runs out at the very end, there's the equalizer. It's Kevin Owens. Not there's the third man. There's no third man. <laughs> what the fuck? What is this fucking NWO? Yeah. Like, it, what are you it, talking it about? It diminished what they were trying to produce there, and it was very confusing. The match was good, but the whole angle just was was weakened. Go ahead, by kid, make yourself a legend. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Dio Madden's a fucking idiot. They make they yourself a legend all over themselves the entire night. They this was bad commentary tonight. Usually we complain about oh they said this they did tonight they stumbled flubbed and and literally just talked nonsense. At times, they made no sense. I, I have, a, a, you know, a few things I'll have to look back for specifics, but just in general, I mean, they, they would make one point and then contradict themselves in the very next <laughs> sentence. I, I was absolutely baffled. And apparently the women are just too busy to be seen tonight. So Where are the women? What was this? They always saw the women tonight. I mean, no, I think they're probably in Australia or something. But no, um, uh, Vic Joseph, uh, he's a woman. He's a big fucking vampire woman. Yeah. You know what? The um, as far as I'm concerned, the WWE was retarded tonight, much like the Jets' quarterback. The New England Patriots made the the Jets' quarterback look like a retard tonight, and the WWE tonight made their fans look like retards tonight. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt about it. Zelina Vega won't be a you know a factor in this match as Sin Cara is you know too quick and fast to. Oh, but you got to keep an eye out for Zelina Vega because she really could be the difference maker. <laughs> What, what are you saying? You know, she's a threat, but don't worry about it. You know, just, oh, my God. And like I said before, I, I burned your house down, Joe. And then, oh, you fixed it? Never mind. Well, I'm going to burn it down again. I am. I'm going to do it again. Oh, you're going to fix it oh, again? Man. Well, that feels pretty pointless. He, he already rebuilt the Firefly Funhouse. It, it's so inconsequential. What, what, the, what was the point? Oh, I'm they're going to reveal. I'm going to burn you know, it down, Jake. His reason why. I'm going to fix it. His reason why was he had to. That's what he said, because I had to. Yeah, there's no story here. Like, how, like, <laughs> how, how do you hurt? Maybe how do you hurt this guy? Maybe there, maybe that, maybe that's the story. You fucking nitwit asshole, retard idiots. Maybe Seth Rollins gets on the mic and fucking, fucking. You saw what I had to do to him. I smashed his face. I smashed his head with a sledgehammer. I smashed his face with a chair. So much, so horrific and so much violence. More violent than I've ever been in a wrestling match in my entire career. And it's above and beyond what I ever expected or wanted to do. It's something that my family questioned me about. I look like a murderer or some crazy lunatic criminal to my family, but it still wasn't enough. It fooled the referee. It, it stopped the match and... The fact of the matter is, I don't know what it takes to get to Bray Wyatt. I don't know what it's going to take to get to Bray Wyatt, but I'm not going to stop until I find out. And that's the next step, burning down the Firefly Funhouse. But no, now Bray Wyatt's built it back up, so I guess I'm going to have to find something else, some other pressure point, or some other way to kill whatever the hell you are. But one thing I know is I'm not going to stop until you're out of the WWE, until you're not breathing anymore, and I still have this WWE Universal Championship, so I'm going to figure out a way to take out the Fiend Bray Wyatt if it's the last damn thing I do, because I'm Seth freaking Rollins, and I burn it down, except it doesn't work! <laughs> the one time the fucking guy actually burns something down, it just fucking grows right back up again! <laughs> it does nothing. It's so <laughs> Uh, it means nothing. What a bunch of stupid shit. And like Costanza said on Twitter, he said, you know, Rollins should be acting still afraid of, of the fiend, <laughs> not know. proud and worry free. <laughs> I mean, you, you came face to face with Wyatt to burn it, you know, the, the Firefly house down. You didn't see the fiend. And on top of it, so you're not afraid. You're, you're not regretting what you did. You'll do it again. It's already reassembled. So it didn't really matter anyways just the whole thing like you said there's no story there he's acting like a heel at times he really is he's acting like a dick and then you know like he's got a chip on his shoulder so they the commentary team says oh well seth you know that the fiend must be getting to him because every little thing's bothering him you know uh, humberto went ahead and said that i'm not going to be the kind of champion who plays with fire like tommy i mean seth rollins and <laughs> he, you know he, he, lo and behold that's what sets him off. He challenges to him, you know, to a match, and he's being a dick to him. 
You know, yeah. Tennis racket Jones himself said maybe maybe you or I could explain why the top babyface Seth invites Carrillo, you know Carrillo to a fight and then work the match as a heel, yelling, "You don't belong here. You know, stay down. You're not enough." He was he was shit to him the entire time, and it wasn't uh, you know the, the 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 top guy breaking him in. It wasn't to earn respect. They did that at the end, but he was acting like a heel. You know, and it just it makes no sense. Well, they don't know well, whether they're up or down. I got to be honest with you, Jake. It felt like that sort of like, do you remember like those movies back with a quarterback or like Shooter McGavin? Hey, happy, yeah. you know, meet us on the fucking ninth green at nine or whatever the fuck. Like, yeah, it's the secret of the pros. It's that varsity thing. Like, hey, ki- hey, man, yeah, I'm hearing all this stuff about you. Yeah, so you kind of said something about me. Yeah, man, I didn't mean it like that. I just was, you know, I'm new and I want to blah. Yeah, yeah, I know, man. Listen, I want to give you a shot. Meet me out in the football field at 10 p.m. tonight, man. Some of the cheerleaders and some of the guys hang out. We can have a little game just for fun, you know? Oh, cool. And then, like, you're out there, but while you're playing, the guy's like, I'm going to fuck you up. And the kid's like, oh, like, what, man? I thought this was a <laughs> Wait, fun. what did I do? And then he takes a shot at your knee. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen in this match, and then not That's only should have happened, but not only did I think that was going to happen, I thought I thought Seth was going to come back into the ring after he won. Maybe he said like patted him on the shoulder and then got out of the ring. Then I thought Seth was going to kind of look like wait a minute, turn around, come back in the ring with a chair, or come back in the ring and then kick him in the balls, then go get a steel chair and then put it around his ankle and step on it, or go grab a sledgehammer or a chair or do the same thing he did to Wyatt again to this kid. And I was like, we're going to see the turn right now. We're going to see the fucking turn right now. As if the burning down the Firefly Funhouse wasn't enough, we're going to see the yeah. real turn now. This the- would be the full, you know, that that was the, the difference maker. This would be the catalyst. And that was a it was a great setup, essentially. And, and that's I, why I was I so believe just it didn't happen. confused and just really, really, really lack any sort of idea as to why they they continue to book him this way this would be perfect Bray's already beloved by the entire universe and the crowd is he, shitting on Seth every second he's a lame idiot yeah he he flipped roles with Roman Reigns and <laughs> lo and behold even as a, a a literal monster that the fiend is the crowd is eating it up constantly he's selling like hotcakes for all his merch people just want to see him constantly it, that's all there is to it. Everybody wants Bray. Yeah, because everything so, is so boring. they're not boring. giving it to him, you know? And, and that's what... Now, I guarantee the dark match will be Bray attacking somebody. They did that on SmackDown, I guess, where Bray attacked somebody after, you know, the dark match was happening. Right. And, I oh, think and, it was and oh, by the way, again. they say they're clearly... And now they saved The Fiend for Friday because they're so worried about the rating on Friday that they're saving that for Friday. And, yeah, and this is why I didn't believe that they didn't want, you know, oh, they burned down the fun house because they didn't well, want to Well, he's on Firefly SmackDown, though. He is, he's on SmackDown, too, right, Jake? So let's yeah, remember that. Yeah, he, he has been drafted to SmackDown. But, it, it's hard to uh, tell. Next few weeks, next uh, this coming upcoming next Monday, and then the few Mondays past that, um, this coming Monday he'll be there on Raw. That's to go home for Crown Jewel. Then the week after that, he'll be on Raw for the cage match. The week after that, he'll be on Raw as well. And in oh. one of those times, he's not booked for the SmackDown show. So he's going to be on Raw more than SmackDown going forward. And we had heard, on, we spoke about it on, out of nowhere, that the you know oh. rumor from most people was that, oh, Fox doesn't want the Firefly Funhouse. I, I didn't believe that then when it was going around. You know, we heard Meltzer say that that, that was his assumption, that, oh, they're getting rid of the Funhouse. I said, no, it, that, that's ridiculous, because well, both brands want about? him so badly they obviously, you know, they're not going to put a contingency on this. They, they, they want the entire character because it's what, the only character they have. I think I get what Meltzer's saying because, like, it looks like a little kid thing and, like, they want this sporting thing. But they don't give a shit. The well, first, they, they made it sound like, oh, it was too yeah, I mean, do, eerie for their their. No, network. there's no way they think that. They don't give no, a fuck. Not Fox at all. don't Because they want the fiend still, obviously, so the fun yeah. house means nothing. And they and the guy was coming out of the ring fucking on the first episode from under yeah, the exactly. ring. Exactly. And I think the biggest miss of tonight, absolutely the biggest miss, was the interaction between Lashley and Rusev. They Ugh. finally do something as we've been pleading for them to do. To go to a restaurant. Yeah, and on location. You know, we didn't. A restaurant for us has been the the big get. Yeah. But you know, they finally go outside of 
their their safe zone, the arena and the backstage area. They go on location. They're on, you know, somewhere, even if it's a set still. How they goofy had, were the cops? How goofy oh, were those the cops? The whole thing was a, a travesty to, to not just Raw's namesake, but wrestling in general. I mean, it was such a, a just a, a he lambasting in, he walked nightmare in to silent. watch. Jake, he walked in silent, like like kind of yeah. like, oh, whatever, and then they had a break apart. That he, was it. He either should have been silent because he was trying to surprise them, but they already had the manager come over and say, oh, we don't want any trouble here. You should leave. And Lashley set it up nicely. He doesn't have the balls. Don't you worry about it. We'll handle it. All Lana did was take off one of her shoes and stand in the back screeching, and Lashley covered up like he was afraid. W- what did that do and prove? Rusev had to be taken away by the authorities. Oh, you're going to be in jail. He should have been throwing fish at Lana, yeah, you know, yeah. screaming at her. You yeah. cold fish. He should have been forcing pasta down Lashley's throat. They should yeah. have brawled into the kitchen, you know, throwing hot oil. I, I, there should have been so much that they could have done here. Do you want to know what I do? So simple. Do you want to know what I would have done? Oh, I, I can only imagine what your creative mind has for this sadistic fucking <laughs> restaurant brawl. So, um... Anything else? Anything? Would you like anything else, uh, Mr. Lashley and Lana? Blah blah. Uh, yes, uh, my man. We're done eating and everything. We I, I'll always have to like have a, a nice a nice glass of hot coffee, man. That's that's all. Be good. Rusev shows up right as the guy's like, "Here's your uh, coffee, man." He's got the big hot coffee, just you know, right there. Just be careful; it's really hot. And he, he pour it for him, and then whatever. And right as he's pouring, there's the commotion. The camera switches from left to right. And in comes Rusev. Here he comes. As Rusev gets close, like, you son of a bitch type of thing, you know, the security tries to hold Rusev. You know, they get to Rusev first to stop him. And while the security's quickly holding Rusev, or whoever's holding Rusev for a second, Bobby Lashley takes the fucking goddamn cup of coffee and throws it in fucking Rusev's eyes. <laughs> and now Rusev's like, ah! And he fucking leans down. Then, then Bobby Lashley takes the whole pot of coffee, the like the aluminum fucking thing, and cracks him over the fucking head with it. And he falls on the floor. And then he's fucking, you know, tucking his shirt in. Blah blah blah. Come on, Lon, let's get the hell out of here. And um, I, I hope. And then the the cops are like, "You want to press charges? Like, oh, like, call an ambulance type of thing, you know?" And, and Rusev's just like fucking ah, his fucking eyes. And he and you know now Rusev's like fucking injured. He's his eyes are fucked. Maybe it leads to a blindfold match. Maybe it leads to whatever the fuck. I don't know. But something. Do fucking something. And so Rusev, the next week, you know, he's on the hospital. He's like, I've got fucking 30% vision in this eye and this eye. And he's just all fucked up from this shit, making Lashley the bigger heel, getting more heat on Lashley. Instead, what you had tonight was a fucking stalemate. What the fuck did this do for anybody? You finally went out on location somewhere, and it was fucking stupid. It was a waste of time. The only thing I remember is the goofy, overacting wrestler cops who were wearing, like, Halloween police outfits. And then the one that was like, oh, oh, no cop does this. No cop acts like this. And they're not security. They're cops. No cop does that. Never, (laughs) Never call that guy back again. Yeah, ever. And like DJ Scandalous just said in the chat, yeah, Rusev is going to be a blind wrestler now. Vince, that's such good shit. <laughs> He'll make Rusev constantly fight Vince blind would from actually, the coffee attack. If I had, I, I, I will, I'm willing to bet if I was on the WWE creative team and they pitched this whole thing they were going to do in the restaurant and then I told Vince that, that Vince would have gone with my idea. He would be like, that's a damn good idea. Like any, I, I swear to God, who the fuck would, what, 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 what the fuck did we see? Let me go to the donations. Pour me a beer. Oh, Christ. Christ Almighty. Uh, Richard Velez, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Welcome to the Joe Cronin Show. As we review Monday Night Raw, and as you Jets fans really want to kill yourselves if you had to watch the Jets and Raw, I'm sorry to you, uh, because it was very similar. Burn it down? More like turn it down. Seth Sooks. (laughs) Seth does suck. Mario Rodriguez. Uh, Mario, thank you for the $2 super chat, man. I didn't even care to restart my computer tonight. It, it might freeze. I don't even give a fuck. Smoke weed every day. Because it was so bored. Didn't watch Raw Joe. Rather watch the sky that seems to be more entertaining if I had the time. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for tomorrow. Power and dark real wrestling begins tomorrow. Let's hope or pray or eat or blaze up. Fire, cow, turkey, petrol pump. <laughs> most blaze, baby. Most blaze. Thank you for the 420, man. Smoke up, everybody. Oh, man. 
God damn, was this horrible tonight. God damn it. Super Chat Party. Let's get some Monday Night Boar t-shirts going. Uh, let's get some Monday Night Boar t-shirts going. Brandon D. in Australia. Thank you, Brandon, for that. Yeah, I don't know. How, I mean, with it being so boring, I don't know how the fuck you're awake right now. Uh, if you're in Australia, I mean, it'd be, I'd just be like, you know what? I'm going to bed early tonight. I'll see you guys later. You know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm in Australia, you know, I don't know, man. I'm where it looks like Sammy Guevara. I mean, he looks like Alberto Del Rio's ring announcer. If he was 19 again and in shape, like it's really <laughs> kind of funny. Alejandro Estrada. <laughs> God damn, man. What in the fuck? He's just very young. So, oh man, the dimples. It's the Power Ranger outfit and the dimples. Whose fucking donation was that? I missed it. My bad. What else we got? Oh, Brandon. Oh, yeah, Brandon. Thank a little you. bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's it. Bubbly. Bubbly. Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> not terrible, but not good. Decent wrestling, but they could have done more. I agree. Rusev yeah. Lashley in the restaurant could have been something really memorable, but was a dud. Rollins burned my soul down. Owens could have made a bigger impact. Four tenths. Uh, four out of ten from Robbie Hyde. I agree with you, man, Robbie. I think I'm going to give tonight a four, which is a bigger score than the, the usual shit, but only because of some of the wrestling, like you said. some The wrestling was decent at times, but my God, the show was so bad with everything else. The creative is so stupid. Like, if I was sitting back there in the boardroom and they were like, well, the OC and blah, blah, and they're going to announce that they have a mystery partner, but then... And so at the very end, Owens will run out. It's like, well, dude, you can't do that. Like those little things, like just saying like, you know, we'll have somebody watching our back tonight. And they're like, who? It doesn't matter. It's a double, it's a tag team match. There's yeah. no, there was no need to, to advertise it as a triple, you know, a six man tag match. And then he's not there. And then Owens is going to run out because it made no sense for Owens to run out at the very end. It's kind of like, why? Yeah, it, it, uh, it. I don't know. And, oh, he's got bad blood with AJ. Well, okay, I guess. Yeah, I mean, and, they could have done the same thing with just saying it's a two-on-two -two match, but we got somebody watching our backs. That's all they had to do. That's all they had to do because, like you said, the whole third man comment was was brain numbing nonsense. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is too, like you know, the heels every now and again should be they should be validated. They should be right, but when they're <laughs> overly correct. It's hard to view them as bad guys. And Shelton Benjamin made one hell of a point tonight by saying what he did. He, you know, was was out there and, and basically tormenting Rey Mysterio. But he was right. He was validated in what he was saying because it's it's all legitimate and true. Yeah. Cain maybe. Velasquez got a match. Why? Because Ray got his ass beat. And I, to the point that I was I was not you know I was laughing out loud at him saying, "Well, that's a U.S. title match." That's an icy title match, you know. Every time you would touch Ray, uh, you know. So if I beat you up, I'm gonna go ahead and get a shot at the WWE Championship, and that, that's really what it yeah. came down to. And he's right because Kane hasn't earned anything within the WWE, you know, wheelhouse. It, the, he hasn't done anything within this universe to to go ahead and have a stake at the well, WWE Championship. Also, does Shelton want to fight his friend? He was like, he's my family and my friend. Oh, so you want to fight him? <laughs> like, well, for the title, maybe. Well, I mean, like it was just weird. Like, well, what? Yeah, the whole thing was just very bizarre, and Kane does not look great. <laughs> Shelton, he looks Shelton, like stick I believe arms. Shelton's a little bit lighter than Brock. No, lighter. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit lighter. Shelton, and yeah, of course he is. Yeah, I think he's like you know a good. I got to figure out how much, but I, I want to be off on that. I'd say Shelton is about two twenty five or two twenty. Yeah, Brock Lesnar's probably like what like two two thirty eight two fifty. Yeah, Brock is way bigger than Shelton. I yeah. mean, Shelton's so, tall, but... The reason I'm saying this is that it, it looked like he was having trouble just to pick him up. Yeah, Brock's at 286, yeah. and Shelton's, Shelton's at 248. Oh, wow. He weighs more than I thought, but still, wow. I, I figured he was, was around 240. Dude, Cain but... Velasquez has my arms. Well, that was at least he was wearing a shirt tonight. A few people did point that yeah, out. Yeah, he, he was wearing a shirt, but you know what? you know what happened? I went from thinking, like, wow, this guy looks like fucking a slob out of shape. But now tonight, what the shirt did was I'll, all I stared at was his tiny little fucking twig arms. <laughs> and like I said, I know he's he's done very well for himself in UFC and MMA in general. And it's not that he's not an accomplished fighter and champion. It's just wrestling's a different 
landscape and yeah. he did well in triple a you know especially when he teamed with cody he did well for that but here i know he's dealing with a bad knee and there's other things and for him just to to pick up benjamin and slam him to the ground and do the the ground and pound that punches, looked awful it it looked just completely basically blown out and it just wasn't believable and it, it just looked bad it looked bad that that's the easiest way to put it it was sloppy and it makes me worry that it's going to be a total clusterfuck in Saudi with this this championship match. Ugh. I I don't know what we're going to get out of those two really, because Brock's not going to be able to really throw him around. He's he's probably in a fragile state, at least going by the, the the medical you know side of things that we've heard for updates, saying that he desperately needs you know surgery to repair his knee and some other issues. So uh, he can't be as as giving as he is with other opponents you know toss him around the ring and stuff i really just i think it's going to come down to how we said before but it's just going to be a mess wow uh justin trudeau is once again prime minister of canada (laughs) now we can do uh maybe you can do like uh you can do blackface again or whatever um, but anyway, yeah, uh, so there's a lot of uh, donations coming in, a lot of calls. We'll get to some calls in a few minutes. Just overall, just thought uh, Raw was terrible, man. I, I I don't know. like It was so bad. I mean, I read the preview earlier in that video today, this morning to you guys, and I just, like, I almost started laughing. Like, the, like one of the biggest, they had, like, four major points, and one of them was the return of Sin Cara. <laughs> And I just, yeah, you, you were dying laughing with that. That was the funniest thing ever. And by the way, they had a good little thing like to be honest but um it's just so funny and it's weird still it's still weird because it's hunico and it's like it's just still playing this in character and it's just fucking hilarious and now they're also advertising um that ray mysterio and kane velasquez will be going up against drew mcintyre and andrade in mexico city um you know ray will be his tag team partner when? And this will be November 30th for a WWE Super Show in Mexico. Well, that's kind of cool, I guess. But Yeah, you got again, Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin, Seth Rollins versus The Fiend, Braun Strowman versus Nakamura for the IC title, Nakamura. Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton, Ricochet and the Viking Raiders versus the OC, and Rusev versus Bobby Lashley. Is this going to be on the WWE Network? I don't believe so. I haven't seen anything that says otherwise. Ugh. Like I said, don't believe so. It could be, but everything I've, I've looked into so far with this show and card is just that it's a super show for the you know, like a gigantic house show in Mexico. Everything reminded me of everything tonight. Like when I was, I mean, I know that I'm a right, I'm a Patriots fan, so you'd be like, well, you must have just loved the Patriots game. I mean, like kind of, but like I was angry too because the Patriots offensive line sucks. Like, if the Patriots' offensive line was good, they would have scored 60 points tonight. They're not going to beat the good teams coming up when they can't score any points because Brady is getting attacked from even the dumbass Jets. So it's like, I was watching that game like, this is awesome, but at the same time, this is dumb. Like, the offensive line sucks. This is, like, you have this magical defense and and a good offense, and this offensive line sucks. And meanwhile, I'm watching the Jets quarterback, who's I, I might be a retard. I'm not sure <laughs> if the Jets quarterback is a retard or not. I don't know who's the bigger retard, the fucking Buffalo Bills quarterback or this guy tonight. But the but that game reminded me of of Raw. And is that the, Sam uh, Darnold? Yeah, he's a he's an idiot, and he's already. <laughs> I mean, he really is a moron. He was throwing the ball up. He was throwing the ball like a fucking spe- like special needs orangutan. And the other thing about it. Is fucking. Then the Star Wars trailer came on, and I was just like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, it's just like I know that Star Wars: The Last Jedi was a piece of shit, but this movie, like, you know, hopefully it saves the goddamn trilogy a little bit if that's even possible. But from JJ what I'm knows seeing, what he has to do to fix it. So maybe I mean, but for, but for, and maybe well, JJ said he set stuff up in seven that he thought was supposed to be carried on in eight, and then Ryan originally agreed to to you know, carry on with the story. And then after JJ was away from it, he was like, wait, I'm going to do this my way. And that's when he made all the changes to so many of the storylines. So. Yeah, but that's why it's like, I don't know if he can fix it, but the bottom line is they're not telling us anything. So the trailer was just kind of like, like, I, I just kind of rolled my just eyes. Just moments. Tra- yeah. Yeah. All the like, oh, isn't that I'm like, kind of glad though, because I don't want them to spoil no, I, anything. No, I agree. Either. No, I agree with you. They did the right thing. But I don't, you're worried. I don't want to yeah. know. But yeah, but the tr- because I got this ambiguous like nothing, it all reminds me of the same thing. 
in the Jets Patriots game, I got this ambiguous nothing because yeah, the Patriots beat the shit out of the Jets. Well, they they suck, and and their quarterback's an idiot. Um, but the Patriots have no offensive line, so what's going to happen when we have to play the Ravens and the fucking goddamn, even the Browns, anybody, the Dallas, like teams that are probably pretty good, even though the Jets beat Dallas. You know, other teams that are good, what's going to happen? Kansas City, what's going to happen when we play really good teams? So I feel like I watched this waste of time game tonight with the Patriots and Jets. Meanwhile, the fucking trailer was ambiguous and just weird and like just whatever. I don't know what any of this fucking means until we get to the actual movie if I'm going to kill myself or not and that's what I got from Raw here's Seth Rollins again I'm gonna burn it down tonight Seth Rollins explains why he burnt down the funhouse did he explain why he burnt down the funhouse uh in that backstage promo that they had he kind of said that because he had to but that was the most we got out of it it wasn't like they it was right before his match so it was like nothing yeah you know, he said the fiend had gotten inside his head, uh, or they asked him if that was the case, and he said that may be true, but he's also gotten in, inside the head of the fiend as well. He said uh, there's an aura about him that you can't explain, and once you step inside with the ring, it changes you forever, and that, that was pretty oh much it. God, he just said he did what he had to do, so... It's like all these weird, like, superhero lines are going on everywhere, and it's like, it's fucking wrestling, like, dude, it's wrestling. Like, why doesn't Seth say, like, I tried to hurt him in the ring. That wasn't working. He kept getting back up. So I wanted to see what I was going to hurt him emotionally. I was going to hurt him where it counts. I burnt down everything, you know, the blah, blah, blah. And and try to, like, convey that. That Like, I'll make it personal. If he wants to make it personal, I made it personal. And I'm going to find out a way to hurt him if it's the last damn thing I do. And it'd be like, wow, that's I get that. But instead, it's like, I don't know. You're just going to try things. Um, you don't know what it's like until you've been in that ring with the hell. Like, what the fuck are you saying? Just like Dio Madden when the fucking Street Prophet jumped off the top rope tonight. Go ahead. Make yourself a legend. <laughs> Is this WrestleMania for the fucking WWE Championship? Make yourself a legend? What? I I don't know. That what was they were not going for what there. to say in this fucking match. I mean, like, put yourself it's not on. What the, you say ever? <laughs> put your like go like. I when announcers start trying to talk to wrestlers like they're like fans of it, it should be like majorly impactful, and it used to be. Like, but it's always kind of cringy when they do that. But that was super cringe. It's the yeah. main event of Raw on just another Monday night. And a street prophet who's been on TV every week, yeah, he jumps off the top rope and does a splash, and the fucking announcer goes, Go ahead, kid! Make yourself a legend! Aren't you, like, fucking younger than this guy? And have you been on Raw and the commentary team for about, like, fucking five weeks? Go ahead, kid! Make yourself a legend! What? <laughs> beyond me i literally was watching like normal like focus like all right let's see what happens and then i heard that and i and i literally went from thinking like watching the match and thinking about it to like what like it took me out of it like i i just i went what the f what yeah when you hear With those your calls stupid and... fucking dreadlocks you look like a fucking idiot there was a few calls like that tonight where it just made me roll my eyes to the point of a migraine and fucking Vic Joseph looks like a fucking mongoloid fucking Nosferatu vampire. I mean, dude. And then, of course, people are still upset with Seth with the uh, comments he made at that panel, you know, saying how, oh, you know, Kenny's in the in the minor leagues. Oh, you know, and it's it's. Yeah. Who the fuck are you talking to, Seth? You idiot. You're, but, literally, you're literally cutting better promos against fucking somebody you can't wrestle! <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That's the kind of Seth we need. But the fans were giving him shit. But Kenny Omega said that, you know, all NXT stars would be in dark matches in AEW. You know, they're they're not the same level of talent. You're going to be in a fucking dark match, you fucking dorko fucking piece of shit, Seth! 
You fucking Colby Lopez piece of shit. You don't have any fucking charisma worth of shit right now. You suck, pal. Let me tell you something. Fucking, you can put all the water you want in your fucking hair before you go out there with your little fucking hair. You were more interesting when you were sending fucking dick pics. You know who's more interesting than you? <laughs> fucking Todd was. Whatever the fuck. Tom Phillips. Tom Phillips was more interesting in, than you in his little video. Hey, What's up, baby? I'm going to suck fuck your face when I get home. Yeah, I want you to suck my dick. Uh, whatever the fuck he said face in that fuck video. Me. Yeah, face fuck me. That face fucking dude was fucking more exciting than you, Seth Rollins. Seth fucking boring as fuck. And here's the announce team. Go ahead, kid. Make yourself a legend. You fuck. Oh, you're, you're sitting next to a legend. Yes. And speaking of, you know, AEW and Kenny Omega, WWE, you know, we, we heard several reports from the arena they were at in Cleveland tonight that they told the crowd next to the staging area, anyone wearing AEW merch would be thrown out since they're in view of the camera. See you later. I mean, they made they made several people remove their shirts, you know, back at the Rumble and things like that. You know, it's, it's not the first time. Fans just recently in Jacksonville. AEW is also taking uh, us. They a couldn't come in with AEW shirts on. AEW is taking shirts. Signs. AEW is also taking signs. Let's be fair. Yeah, no, it's it's both sides, but they didn't do that at NXT, which surprised me. And I, I did laugh at one of the comments. Somebody said, "I'm going to wear my uh, LGBT AEW shirt, my rainbow one." I dare them to kick me out. <laughs> what a power move that is! Yeah, <laughs> kicks out gay fan or whatever. Yeah, that would be a, a PR nightmare. But it's it's kind of silly. People know the product exists, and, and they're not going to go and tune in because somebody's wearing the shirt. But when you hear stories like this that get reported that, oh, they're, they're not allowing people to wear their shirts or you know they're censoring people, that's what gets people to be like, oh, well, that's, that's a negative outlook. Let's go ahead and check out what they don't want us to see. I want everybody to realize. Strides in effect. I, I just want to keep reiterating this. I will re reiterate this until the end of time. WWE hired Vic Joseph over me. I want you I want to reiterate this until the end of time the WWE hired this goofball over me and then apparently hired Dio Madden to be the color commentator. Go ahead, kid, and make yourself a legend. I almost fucking threw up all over myself. I mean, the, this is the biggest match. <laughs> this is the biggest match of the Street Profits' career. Yes, this is the biggest match of the Street Profits' the Street Profits' career so far. Come on, guys! Yeah, there's there's a lot of little you know quips you could have thrown out there, but not fucking. Let's make, make their debut a legendary. legendary. You could even say, yeah. And, well, whatever. But not, oh and, my god! Now, unfortunately, with SmackDown moving to Fridays, you know it's, it's nigh impossible for me to get there for the reviews. But one of the things that I, I saw after the fact that I wanted to address with you is it's begun, and I brought it up a few weeks ago, and I wasn't sure if they were going to go through with this. I told you, World Series. Now, now this Friday night, Fox is is hosting the World Series. SmackDown has to go to Fox Sports One. So mm -hmm. this Friday. Which is SmackDown hilarious. will not be on Fox. It'll be on Fox Sports 1, which a lot of people don't have. Right. Because <laughs> it's, it's cable, and it's like another package in cable. Yeah, good idea. It's like I don't even think I have it in my new cable package, so I, I can stream it, but... We need, need to go, ooh, we need we need to go week, week to week. Got to stack up those ratings and build an audience and go week to week. And, and in your fourth week, you have to go to some fucking mystery channel. You just lost another half a million viewers from the week before. Half a million viewers. Oh, but they're going to make up for it because this Sunday they're going to have a one-hour special at 5 Eastern. The title of the special hasn't been announced, but the description says it's a profile of some of the greatest stars in wrestling and sports itself. I didn't even know that was happening. I, I just found this out now. So, But there you go. That's how they're trying to make up for the lost uh, that you know, make up for ratings shit. on Fox. That's not going to help at all. No. But uh, already it begins. I, I guarantee, we said it before, I think they have a year on this contract before they can fix things and, and change things. Once that comes and, and they don't get the ratings they want, Fox is going to move WWE to Fox Sports 1. Yep. So it'll still be on Fox. It'll just be Fox Sports 1. Well, and then they'll be getting a 1.4 for SmackDown. 
Well, dude, and and everybody, and every, and by the way, we all keep saying like they're losing viewership. They never had this viewership again. Like no, these, this is this is a, these an are, increase. We they, they brought over about two two point five million fans, and those are the people that are going to remain there, and they're probably going to be under back down to two and one point nine and whatever. And dude, I watched the other day. It had been a little while since I've seen. Um, you know, we saw Cody Rhodes versus um, Nick Aldis. Uh, for the NWA championship at All Out or All In or whatever one it was. And then, you know, the rematch where you get to give the belt back, basically, at the NWA show. And I watched that match again the other day, and I watched that. He was a dorky announcer, and I do wish there was someone more commanding in that commentary position. And I'd love to take his job, too, and sit next to Cornette and Tony Schiavone. But the announcer that they had, that that skinny-looking dorko guy, is pretty good though. He's he's good though, and Jim Cornette was great. Tony Schiavone was great, and him all together, they made for a great announce team. And it, it reminded me like, wow, this is what it feels like when things really mean something. Like the announcing was great for NWA, and it's just then you watch Raw, and it's just I want to chop off my penis. Like, I want to chop my fucking penis off Super while chat. watching this show. Super, Super chat. chat. Pre-ordered my SW ticks for first viewing Fook Raw Two Tenths. SW ticks? Oh. I think I know what you mean. Shut up and bend over. Oh, my God. Finish it. Oh my God, it. don't finish it. Please don't finish it. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> what up, Soundwave? <laughs> Didn't bother with Raw tonight. Just watched the Patriots continue to fuck the Jets and make them into their cock ring. Oh. Fucking four interceptions and a goddamn safety tonight is crazy. But you know what isn't crazy? Knowing Raw would suck no matter what. Mm. Absolutely, Soundwave92. And listen, Soundwave92, I love you, man. Thank you for the 950. And, uh, yeah, the Patriots' defense was scary as shit. I mean, the safety was what hilarious. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Will Tactics. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Put some respect on Harambe's name. We are making a shrine of him here since the Bengals can't get it done. Ah, we never get it done. Anyways, I'm happy to see monetize this 208 is back up. Play your fucking clips. Play your fucking clips. <laughs> Smiley face. Yeah, just about every episode of Monetize This is back up again, and I even made a playlist for it, so you should be able to get all the episodes, Will Tactics, uh, thank you for that. And yeah, Randy Orton is clearly baiting WWE for money. That's yeah, what's that's, going that's, on. Oh, that's a, given. a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, bubbly. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's was show. 10-0. Kill me. <laughs> Mike Amelto, thank you for the $3, man. Uh, yeah, I would say, I'd say kill me as well. 10-0 or 0-10? I I think you mean zero ten, but that's I get it. I get it, man. Um if you're new to the channel, I hope you guys subscribe down below and hit that like button, man. Let's get over a hundred likes at least. Let's at least get into triple digits. I yeah. mean otherwise I'm gonna bash my head open with something. <laughs> Joe I mean, I smack my ass and call me Susan. <laughs> I will. We'll get into it in a minute. This is awful. Oh well. Fuck WWE. Making promises that they don't keep. Last week they promised a tag main event but no match. Tonight they said a six man tag but didn't happen. <laughs> My wife promised me dinner last night but no dinner. Tonight I was promised a blowjob but no blowjob. <laughs> Varsity Pussy. Thanks for the $14 donation. Varsity Pussy. 
That's yeah. terrible. WWE all is all, they're all is unfulfilled. They're all over the place. Yeah, very unfulfilled. They, they've been pulling this bait and switch for a long time now. Yeah. But it's been really running rampant this entire year since the night after Mania where they started with the whole title versus title match. Yeah. And that never happened. We ended up with a tag match. As I was saying, smack my ass and call me Susan. This is awful. They had the Fiend lose clean to Seth Rollins tonight in the dark match. What? Exactly. I'm I'm still trying to process. They had a cage match, and Seth managed to escape the cage, retaining his title. Okay, I guess that. Uh, I, it's, I know a dark match doesn't count, but still, we, we got some of what they practiced going forward last time for Hell in a Cell. It seemed yep. that, you know, the multiple stomps, the kick out at one, things like, like you wow. know, that, that pretty much was how the match worked until the shitty ending. Now, I love the way they booked it, too. You know, you have this such long, long title for the match. It goes on and on saying, like, uh, I wish I remember the exact of it, but it, it's funny. You know, they, they want to make sure it's a, you know, f- false count anywhere. The match could not be stopped for any reason. We screwed up so badly last time. We apologize greatly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much is, is what it is, but... The official is Seth versus the Fiend. Falls Count Anywhere match can't be stopped for any reason. So, but yeah, to have him, you know, get stomped and then lose clean with the red lights still. They still got those damn dumb red lights on. I, I was hoping that was only for Hell in a Cell and then they would realize this is not good. People don't, you know, don't like it. They, we can't see what's going on. <sighs> And some people said, like, oh, I think Raw's choice in this trade is Bray, the more he's on Raw. They didn't mention anything about a trade. Bray's just they didn't scheduled say for Raw for the next pretty much month. So. Yeah, they said nothing about that trade or anything. Yeah, the only big trade they had was Nikki and Alexa Bliss going to SmackDown. So, Man, this was... Oh, my God. I don't but know they had him lose you. clean already. I mean, like I said, yeah, it's a dark match, but they're having a cage match. You know, November fourth. I mean, he did but, escape, so it's like he ran out of the cage, and that you know. So I get, yeah, like, that's but, a good way to get out of it. Yeah, he didn't pin him yet. It's still just every little bit is just a, you know that much more taken away from the fiend. Well, the last time we heard from Cody Rhodes, as you remember, uh, as far as Vince Russo is concerned, uh, Cody Rhodes told Vince Russo that Shock Factor was out the window, man. And I guess uh, there's some kind of interaction here that I'm reading. He took to Twitter. Address comments Vince made on his podcast. If only, uh, I mean, he must listen, I guess, huh? Cody responded and said, not only is AEW happy with the numbers, but so is their partner TNT. Um, they overshot projections and set a new record for Warner Media Program, blah, blah, blah. Rhodes are really happy. The partner's happy. On a related note, Rhodes revealed that the first two episodes of AEW Dark Series on YouTube have drawn more than 2 million views. Have they really gone over 2 million now? I knew they were like over uh, for a both of them. I believe so. Yes, combined or like they both. I think it's combined. Between? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Each um, episode got a million views. I'm pretty sure. But uh, it's still really good for for that because that's like, uh, you know, uh, that's full audience retention from their almost you know almost. Yeah. Oh, I guess somebody said Vince Russo said on his podcast, so like, he's actually responding to a fan who told Cody what he said. So. You know, now I think people should just tweet things that Russo didn't say to Cody. You know, I mean, hey, Russo said on his podcast that your dog sucks, you know, and then like Cody can be like, well, you know what? He sucks. Like, but like he really didn't say that. So just tweet Cody Rhodes things that Vince Russo says that he didn't say. And uh, that should be make for an entertaining time on Twitter, everybody. Um, What a fun time that could be. Uh, Can't wait for Wednesday. Can't wait for AEW. And it can't be as bad as this shit tonight. Nine one zero. Yeah, they just keep announcing new matches and all sorts of stuff. It, it looks like it's going to be a hell of a show. Well, we'll see. Hey, nine one zero. Hello. Hello. What's up, man? Not much, man. I tell you what. I just I I basically quit watching Raw because, like y'all were saying, the commentary is just so cheesy. But when you watch like AEW or any of that, the commentary makes sense. The storyline makes sense. You know, AEW, they don't go and say, when Ricochet's fighting Drew McIntyre or whatever, they don't say, oh, this match will do wonders for Ricochet's career. Yeah. Like, how on earth does that even make sense? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, 
it's so different. Like I'll just play like a clip, and I don't know if Jake can hear it, but probably not. Can you hear this? On the outside and Brandy Nothing Rose. yet. All right, well, I'll try to mute you and try to get it to work for you, but just listen to some of this commentary from AEW. I mean, I'm sorry, from NWA. It's trying to take up for her man in the other corner. Well, we've seen this. It's too bad I'm not friends with Cornette, man. I mean, maybe I could have gotten something over there, but uh, Cornette hates me, so I'll never be there. But what a great promotion uh, a, uh, NWA has been. Offense from Cody before trying to take a page out of the Ric Flair playbook. Attempted the Not really a fan of this guy. Ric Flair playbook. Not really a fan of that guy, but whatever. He's still way better than anything on Raw. Figure four leg Ooh. lock. All this had it scouted. Cody heading back to the top once again. It didn't work the first time. It's not going to work right now. Nick like if this guy was on Raw, I would probably bury him. All this stayed right on top of him. Stayed right on top of him. Like he just sounds like a little kid announcing. I don't know why. All this now. Uh oh. We saw this before it all ends. This will do some see damage. Again? To the back. Superplex connects. Good lord! It shook the camera platform. The folks here in Nashville, intently watching these. Hey, cut off by Camille. Here in Nashville, Tennessee. They call it the uh -oh. asylum. This oh, could be no. the. Uh oh, not into the front row. There he gets launched over the steel and into the chairs. We're headed into the crowd. Now let's keep in mind that Earl Hebner is the referee in charge in this fall. Am I right? Because Brian was yes. the referee in charge in fall number one. That they is are correct as Cody Rhodes. He's oh. going for a whole lap, gaining speed, gaining momentum. Oh. But he gets cut off by Camille. A roadblock right in his way. Cut off by Camille. Well, I tell you what, I know several people have been cut off by Camille Tony, but that's a different story. I know. <laughs> oh man, I fucking love Jim Cornette. Yeah, I don't. Not a big fan of the lead announcer, though. Yeah, I will say he's kind of dorky too. He's not much better than Vic Joseph sometimes, but it's better than Raw. It's better than that. And really, what makes it better is Jim Cornette and and Tony Schiavone. But and that guy's just really calling the action. But he got cut off a roadblock in it. You know, like I don't really like that guy, but you know. I would have called it differently, but whatever. Fucking, I hate myself. <laughs> it's like every time I listen, I, I listen to everything, and I just think like, uh, except for um the reality of wrestling guys in Texas. Those guys, thumbs up, man. Booker T, man. Booker T, man. You got a great announce team, Booker. You got two guys on commentary in reality of wrestling, and they are just fucking boom. You got it. You put, you, God damn, you put Jim Cornette on with those guys, it would be a real fucking fire. Uh, just a great commentary team in reality of wrestling, which is too bad because, I mean, it's not too bad, which is too bad that they're stuck there not doing anything else because they're so good. They really are. I want to take a phone call from, uh, could you hear any of that towards the end, Jake? No, not yet. I want to take uh, BSP's call. He was there tonight. Saw pictures oh, of him. There we go. Yeah. I don't know if this is him. Hey, though. How are you, tonight, guys? What's up, man? Is this BSP? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to let you know, Raw sucked tonight, and uh, Monday Night Game was actually a little bit more entertaining. At least people get to see Tom Brady all the time, and you know, they actually, you know, I rather watch Monday Night Football than I rather watch another episode of Raw because. NFL and plus uh, basketball is coming up real soon, so it's like forget it now. WWE can't compete with the NBA. Yeah, man, I, it's uh, it was it was tough to watch uh, anything tonight, but uh, yeah, they're they're in trouble. This was so I was bored to be honest. Raw just bored the shit out of me. It makes me fall asleep. It's like it's better than taking it's better than taking sleeping pills tonight. <laughs> That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, but, uh, real quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, I wasn't going to say anything. I'm just fucking, I'm fucking so tired. I am just don't even know what to say. Yeah, I know. Hey, but real quick, this, this is a what if. Uh, what if, if Excalibur from uh, uh, AEW, very good commentator, by the way, hands down, very good. Imagine that if Mike today from TNA, the commentary, imagine that if you get three guys, if you get Mike today from TNA, the professor, then you got Tony Schiavone, and then you got J.R. Jim Ross all together in a commentary booth. 
for a- for AEW. Picture that. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be good. It would be good. But the thing is, like, again, it's like three main guys all talking on each other. It's weird. It's like, I don't know, man. Like, I'd rather have fucking, like, I'd rather have, to be honest, I'd rather have, like, I'd rather have Jim Ross, to- Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and Jim Cornette on commentary. Oh, yeah. Then, then Mike today would definitely do the backstage segments. That would yeah, be really yeah. good, though. I mean, Mike's so old now, I don't know if he's even doing anything, but. Yeah, I mean, Mike Tanay would be better. Than, hey, hey, the, but, you know, I, I'm not even that worried about AEW, but it definitely doesn't feel right. It feels like Excalibur should be lead commentary for, like, fucking, like, Ring of Honor or something or, or, or something else like that that's, like, a step below, but he could be the top guy. As the third, as the second guy in with Jim Ross and Shivani, it just feels, like, overdone as far as uh, commentary goes. But I don't know. Yeah. What, what the fuck yeah, do I that's know? That's- uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. No, go ahead. No, I'm I'm good. Yeah, but you know, for us, you know, old school wrestling fans that were uh, we watched from uh, Monday Nitro, uh, like back in the late '90s and early 2000s, you have Tony Schiavone, who has still has that voice. It's like a bit of a nostalgia, so that's very good because it was like, oh, Tony Schiavone, that's the voice. And said, oh my God, you you popped the, your memory. It's like, oh man, I remember the good old days of uh, Monday Nitro and. You know, it was very good. And then J.R. Jim Ross was here during the Attitude Era and all that stuff. It's like, it feels very, it, it feels such an, an amazing uh, time uh, as a wrestling fan when, when you watch this kind of product. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it does. It's very, well, You were there tonight, right? No, I wasn't. I was watching it uh, uh, on TV just like the rest of uh, is this, every, just like the rest of the world. Is this not BSP then? Uh, what happened? This isn't BSP. Uh, BSP. What was that? Oh, that <laughs> answered the not. question. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, I guess he's still calling. My bad. I thought he said yes in the beginning too. So somebody said uh, if Joe wasn't so crazy, he might have a commentary job. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, I'm not Joe. I'm Dan. This is a little bit of a character I play on this channel. And if people don't understand, that's like saying, well, well, you know. Maybe if uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't kill all those people in those movies, you know, he could have a job somewhere. It's like it's not a real thing. It's, I'm not really crazy. I just pretend to be. It's like it's. I'm actually skinny. This is just a suit I wear, so people don't recognize me in yeah, public. Yeah, I have. I'm actually a female, by the way. No, oh. it's not that. It's just people hire their friends and stuff like that. That's that's all there is to it. There's BSP. There he is. Hey, man. Hey, what's going on, guys? Guy was trying to be you. I don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened. That, that voice. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, that's not me." <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, oh man, yeah, Somebody I was actually first, at though. the show tonight. Yeah, how was it there? I mean, uh, I put me to sleep at home. It was probably better there, but oh, it's always way better when you go to the show. Of course, it's raw, so you know it's terrible. But it, the experience there was was great, and you guys saw where I was. I was like ramp side, so yeah, right, it was incredible. Right as everybody was coming out. Yep, absolutely. I was um, trying to I, see if I saw you when uh, Christ Rey Mysterio was walking across the ramp, but I didn't catch you. Oh yeah, actually, um, you know, once Ray left the ring with Cain Velasquez, I actually shook both of their hands. Oh, that's <laughs> so awesome. that was pretty cool. Um, I got some good pictures and stuff. Um, I, I, there's a few shots where I was on TV. Uh, some some of my friends were telling me that, but. Yeah, it was just it was just great just being where I was. I think that was the best part for me. Um, some things were okay, but. You know, it's raw. Yeah, that's the thing. And did you stay for the dark match main event that they had after Raw went off the air? Yeah, I did. Like, I watched Seth beat the Fiend Bray Wyatt in a steel cage. Yeah, that that's, was. Uh, <laughs> that's troubling, but it, it is, and it's so funny. I just came back to YouTube, but it's just like it, WWE has just still been the same since I, I stopped making videos. It's it's, not, it's just the same thing over and over. It's. It's frustrating at times. <laughs> yeah, really is. It's it's on a you know constant repeating cycle, and that's the unfortunate part. You know, we were saying earlier that the the opening was rather solid. I, I think I enjoyed it a bit more than Joe did, but you know, obviously the match was really damn good. I'm happy that McIntyre's doing well and back. Him and Ricochet put on you know hell of an opening. I will say him and Ricochet have incredible chemistry together, and that that actually was probably one of my favorite matches of the night. 
Um, that and Seth versus I, I don't I'm I'm probably gonna butcher his name Humberto. Humberto, yeah. I, I've never seen him wrestle before. I I never knew anything about him, but that guy is great. Oh yeah, yeah. He was very smooth out there, Humberto Carrillo. Yeah, he's got uh, a lot yeah, to the offer. Crowd was going crazy for him. He was good in Two Hundred Five Live, but oh, that's you know, the I thing. I never really him. watched Two Hundred Five Live. <laughs> I, I, you know, I watch. I use. He basically came around when I stopped watching all that stuff. So he was he was pretty good a couple times, but I forgot who he was. To be honest, man, he. They say Buddy Murphy's the best kept secret. This guy might be the best kept secret. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, I don't think so. On the <laughs> not at the, <laughs> he's very very young. Too, no, so that gonna... that promo made him. He was retarded in, in the promo. Well, well, on the mic maybe, but in the ring he was. It's incredible. like, but it's how many how many enough. guys are we gonna have in the ring that are good that like are retarded outside the ring? I think he's one that you can uh, tell everybody... he was kind of reading off a cue card. I think if he gets a bit more time to to own in that skill that he'd be better at it but the one thing i'll say that's better about him is like it's better than fucking ricochet being like i'm a real superhero like it's better than that <laughs> but, it, but it's not you much know, I better got these scars yeah it's ricochet. not much better <laughs> uh yeah humberto is only 24 so oh he's wow just, he's he just turned 24 two days ago oh he's on October 24 20th. yeah so he, wow. he's very very young extremely gifted in the ring that's what i'm saying i really think he has a, a great deal of time still to hone that craft by the way it's Orton, Humberto. Orton signed a, a 10-year contract in 2010 so that's why i think he's messing around with all this stuff but you figure he's 39 you know and, and look at how he started out i, I kind of can see some some semblance and shades of similarities a lot of people were saying his name two different ways i heard humberto and humberto i'm pretty sure it's humberto because they were calling him humberto yeah, they called him Humberto, but I, I guess it all matters with the accent. I mean, I don't know if it matters, Humberto. but when I first, I thought it was Humberto, but now it's Humberto. So it's Humberto Carrillo, a Carrillo, and I don't know how they're fucking saying it because everybody was saying, I heard three different ways. So I'm like, are they fucking pronouncing this the right way or different every time? Like, what am I hearing? Um, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I bet it's going to be different with every, yeah, with each person that says it, they'll say it some different way. And I get Absolutely. it. Yeah, I get it. It's just like, uh, it seems like it's Humberto. They're going to go with Humberto. They're not going to go with Humberto. It's Humberto. Who knows? <laughs> so fucking confused. Oh, well, how was commentary? Considering I was there, oh, I didn't it was, hear oh, it. You'd be, it was the worst thing ever. It made the show worse. You would have killed yourself. This was one of the worst commentary nights in a while. Like, it was worse than wow. usual. It was worse than usual? Dude, at, oh, the, at, at the end when one of the Street Profits jumped off the top rope, Dio, yeah. Dio Madden said, go ahead, kid. Make yourself a legend. Oh, no. Please tell me he didn't say that. <laughs> it was Make like, yourself a legend? About? What are oh. you talking about, dude? Like, That's cringe. That is cringe. It was way better without the commentary. <laughs> yeah, it was It was better because, like, whatever. I'm do I, I really got to stop bitching about the commentary. I know everybody's sick of me. I'm sorry, guys. I'm... A fucking retard idiot. I know people are like, oh, but no, that, because... no, you're great. You should be on commentary. If that's the type of crap that they're getting on Monday Night Raw, you should be on Monday Night Raw. I'm so... I mean, literally, we heard them say tonight, but he's got a great mustache. Like, that's that's their that's <sighs> I, I, their idea of, of you know, valued oh input. Oh, my God. And, and I mean, just... that was, that's literally a, a quote. Even, even it makes you miss Michael Cole. Even producing, dude. <laughs> oh my god! I, I never, never thought I would hear that. <laughs> I never wanted to be. I never wanted to be backstage. But like this type of stuff makes me want to work there backstage. And I think I'm an idiot. And it's like, but I w I want to do that. Like, and all these things, like, dude. And I'm and I'm only fucking. And yeah, I'm only mad about the commentary thing because people have to think about this. Have you you know when a team loses a big game? But like, there's next week. You know what I mean? You know when it, you, you know a team loses a bad game and the, like it drives you crazy. Like you lost and now you got to play next week and you just want to get to that next game because you're so yeah. fucked up over it. Well, losing the ability to you know what I mean do the commentary to a guy like Vic Joseph and then missing out on a couple other opportunities that I've missed out on. It feels like I've lost like three or four big games. But I never get that next game to come along to like fix it. 
You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why I think I'm fucked up and why I keep mentioning this shit. So I am sorry about that. So I think I'm in some kind of fucking, like, it's like you lose the Super Bowl or something like that, but then the next year, you, you then you get injured and you can't play. So it's like that's all you're thinking about. So I, well, I do have to work on like that. Jerry I'm sorry. Waller, Joe, that can't even say Firefly Funhouse. And he must have said, I think, ten times without overstating it, that the Street Profits are younger than the OC. You know, they're the young yeah. guys. They're young. No shit. <laughs> like, I, I, simple observations is not commentary. Like I said before. I, well, you know, they could have done funny stuff with Jerry Lawler. Even if Jerry Lawler wasn't going to be a heel, he could be like, He's be like, guys, I can't wait. I hope, the, I really hope the Street Profits win tonight. And then, you know, fucking Dio Madden could have been like, Geez, Jerry, why do you want them? Geez, you really want them to win? Yeah, I want to party with them afterwards or something like that. Stupid shit like that. He could say that type of stuff. And it's dumb and cringe, but at least it's better than just stating the same thing three different times. Like, what are you doing? Like, and just, they need a fucking heel commentator, but not a stupid fucking Corey Graves tweener fucking thing. They need a guy who's just a dick, who's just like complete shithead, who's like, I hate these street profits, man. I'm really, you know. I used to like being in the back in the locker room, but ever since these guys came along, it's just annoying. I can hear them down the hall, always <laughs> yelling and hyping up Raw, and they're not even on the show. It's like, have you ever seen two guys, they might as well be fans in the crowd. That's why they're not going to win this match, because they're a couple of stupid fans. And Vic yeah, Joseph, and, and, like, just... And that made sense, considering they, like, made their entrance through the crowd, too, so it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You have Dio saying if these guys like, well, lose we live tonight. in a society, come on, if, that's what you're going to pop out. Yeah, how about if how about uh, uh, if these two guys how about if they hey if they lose tonight do they go back to NXT? Oh come on, Jerry! <laughs> like that type of thing. <laughs> right? Wait, yeah, something like be, that. That's what you need. And, and then you, you know you no know, instead King's saying, well after all McIntyre's been through, he looks fresh as a daisy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was literally said tonight. <laughs> he looks fresh as a daisy. <laughs> <laughs> a daisy? A you're going to correlate that's that with Drew McIntyre? After all McIntyre and Spencer, he looks fresh as a daisy. Fresh as I a heard daisy? that and I died. And I'm like, what are you doing? I, 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 obviously, he looks refreshed because he's been home recuperating from injury, you numbskull. How fucking retarded can you be? But as a daisy, that's how you're going to explain this this fucking hulking machine of, of pure death and destruction? You're going to make him say that he's as fresh as a daisy? Dude, Drew McIntyre uh, walked right by us on the ramp. That man is an absolute unit. Yeah, That guy huge. is built. Yeah, it's, you, it's it's amazing seeing him up up close, and you classify him as a daisy, as fresh as a daisy. Why? <laughs> I can't. Like I said, I can't even pinpoint. There was a lot of little <laughs> things like that tonight that drove me insane. I wish I had. I, I, I just it was. You could have made a notebook. You you could have wrote a whole fucking notebook of shit they said tonight. It everything they said was like it's like I'm watching, and I don't really like what I'm watching, but I'm focused on it. And every time they said something like that, it was like someone stabbed me in the side with a knife like again like oh like ooh, like what what the fuck like shut the fuck shut the fuck up like that's what i wanted to say <laughs> yeah, you yeah that's crazy i'm so glad i didn't get to hear commentary oh, oh my goodness that's terrible dude i stick a daisy up jerry's ass and i you know what at least he's fucking and he's probably the better one yeah cool's like yeah well, studio's coming up after the break we're gonna see what this brings so, so this you, kind, some of this kind of not makes sense though because of the draft. Nothing makes sense because every, before the draft, it's wait till the draft, and when the draft happens, it's because of the draft. It's a fucking yeah. it's all Lana's a SmackDown, mess. you know, star. <sighs> Same thing with with you know the Fiend. Obviously, granted, we didn't. Yeah, see why the him fuck is Seth still tonight, fighting but... the Fiend if the Fiend's on SmackDown? Yeah. The, it, Why? They they should have just went through with that trade part. If they want him on both shows, then even just say, oh, he's got powers. He appears where he wants to. Fuck it. We'll go with it. But you can't come out and tweet and What's... say emphatically that the wild card rule is over and then have people on both shows. What's the smoke right. comments? People are bringing up the smoke comments. What is that? Oh, they said uh, that was a ton, too, because that's the Street Wasn't Profits it? motto. You know, We want that smoke. But what was the yeah. comment? Yeah. Well, I don't remember what commentary said. They said a few really dumb things. Ugh. Maybe somebody in the chat knows. Some, so I, I think I, I I remember this too, but I but it like it's like I, I washed it out of my head on purpose because I think I heard the same thing and I was like, oh, 
you know, whatever. Um, yeah, just man. on top of all the dumb things they said on commentary, you probably just was like, you know what? That's enough. I'm just going to tune you guys out now. Oh my Christ, man! Like I, j- I don't even know. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. I, I, got- I get what you're saying though about commentary, and especially with the teams. Okay, I'm a, a, obviously I'm here in Cleveland, so I'm a Browns fan. So I know about losing yeah. big games and having to move on to next week. Right, of right. Course, next week <laughs> you had a whole season of that. You had a whole yeah. season of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you guys are weird. Right now, you guys are like weird. Like so, like anything. Yeah, could, I, I believe that you guys could beat us more than the Jets or more than any of Miami and the Jets. So it's t- it's a tougher game next week than it's been. So that's true. Because that, that's it, true, and we did beat the Jets, so that, that oh, works. Yeah, 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 they can't get smoking Cleveland. Yeah, AJ said stuff like that too. Oh yeah, you can't oh, get smoking his interview. Cleveland. Yeah, a, a lot of it was just ridiculous, and uh, you know whatever, but. <laughs> I also thought it was weird we didn't see any women matches tonight. Like we got one in, in main event. We got Natalia and Sarah Logan, but there was no Becky, no Charlotte, no nothing. I don't know yeah, and I guarantee they'll be on SmackDown even though they're Raw stars. Oh my goodness! Holy they should have just left it how it was. Because I'm pretty sure everybody is back from I don't know overseas the Australia tour already. Yeah, because they thought. have to work SmackDown on yeah, Friday. Yeah, I right? thought everybody was back already today. I know that you know we don't know if Roman's definitely injured or not. That's being well, he got a know, stinger. Examined. That's yeah, that's true. That happened. So there's that little God, piece. He's hurt we don't too? know if he's out of commission, right? Yeah, like, he, he's, the, he's probably not out. He probably just be, was like evaluated. He got a stinger, and that's <laughs> scary. You ask a certain other YouTuber, he got mauled and, and mutilated, and he had yeah. hunks of skin and flesh hanging off his body. <laughs> so, oh yeah. my goodness! Dude. I saw that picture. Oh, what the fuck! Fucking <laughs> Can you hear but this, Jake? Can you guys hear this? Stupid. No, not yet. Joe, Nothing stop playing that audio. Crap. Crystal sounds amazing. <laughs> I would put it on my phone. I'm trying to get this for you. <laughs> yeah. Joe, stop playing that clip. Crystal sounds amazing there. I would put <laughs> her in my phone. Every now and again, it'll chime in. Okay, I think we can get it here. I think we can get it. <laughs> Joe, stop playing that clip. Crystal sounds amazing there. I would put her in my phone. <laughs> What what is the context of that? Oh, yeah. I I basically bust in on her. I I basically bust in on her. You hear it? Not yet. God damn it! We're gonna get it. We're gonna get this shit to work. God damn it! We're gonna get this to work. So the only real question left is who? I I basically bust in on her. What about now? You got it. Yeah, yeah, baby. That's what it took. Yeah, um, uh, somebody said, how did you get that whole deal with whatever? And I, I really think that it, I don't want to talk about it much because I know it's starting to piss people off. And I really, I am sorry about it, guys. I know that some of you are like, no, no, you're fucking whatever the fuck. But um, I think it's the time I worked with Les Thatcher, to be honest. I think he's the guy because he's the guy who worked, uh, Les Thatcher, uh, he did, he trained, uh, he didn't do him. <laughs> he didn't do John Mugger, <laughs> uh Dean Ambrose, but uh, he tra- he trained, uh, you know, and he got, I believe, got Dean Ambrose signed by WWE. John Moxley signed, so it could have been Les Thatcher. I don't. No one ever really told me to be honest, so I really don't 100 percent know. But I did commentary with Les Thatcher a couple times, and that was like, uh, I it was like the greatest thing ever, and like both times was a surprise. It was like, oh, Les Thatcher's here, and I'm like, what? And I'm like, I'm gonna be doing commentary with Les Thatcher. Are you kidding? So like that that's was incredible. yeah, dude. It was surprising as hell, you know. So maybe maybe that's what it was. But anyway, so what else? Uh, you know, what was the what did the, the dark match? Was there a good response? Were people booing Seth and cheering Wyatt? What was the dark match like? It was absolutely what you thought it was. They booed the fuck out of Seth Rollins and cheered for uh, Bray Wyatt. And th- the ending was so stupid. Because, all right, Seth tried to climb over the steel cage, and, of course, Bray no-sold his moves and hopped up and, you know, did the mandible claw and brought him back in. Seth just kept hitting him with curb stomps, and then he finally hit him with one and escaped the cage. It was so stupid. It's just like, why are these two even facing off right now? We know Seth's going to retain his title right See, now. See, what if they had made, if they made Rollins flip tonight, right, and he had come back in there to Humberto... And kicked him in the balls, and then grabbed the steel chair, and then put it on his ankle, then smashed his ankle, then grabbed the sledgehammer and smashed the chair on his ankle, and and people were booing, and now Seth is like, it was like, what the hell is he doing? And then, you know, like later on, he has this dark match with Bray Wyatt. It would have made sense if, 
you know, Seth out of nowhere, you know, curb stomps Bray Wyatt, and he's out for a second, but he won't, you know, he's coming, he's still getting up, and then Seth just cowardly, like, runs out of the cage and runs away. That would have worked perfectly yep. with, oh, wow, we got this big flip. But it's, and I wonder if they are flipping him and they're just trying to wait, you know what I mean, to create this more of a stir. So I get that if they are, but what if he never turns heel? What if Seth never. They need to turn him heel. They do. He yeah. has to at this point. He, I mean, the crowd's going to turn him heel. The crowd's going to start hitting him with shit. I'm and surprised it, yeah. he didn't get booed during that. Well, I mean, they were chanting for Bray Wyatt during his match with Herman Barry Till, but they. <laughs> but look at how much like, they used to boo Roman, you know? We've had many a discussion, BSP, about this before. Oh, they should have turned Roman. You know, we went down that road. They never did. Uh, I, I, the only like semblance of hope we have to hold on to is the fact that Roman wasn't healed before, but Seth has been. So maybe they will be more willing to turn Seth. Right. Yeah. But they view him and as he was a great champion guy. as a heel. Yeah, they view him as a top guy, but he's just not seen that way. Becky has a higher standing than he does, and I think also because they're this power couple. Right now, yeah, that's, that's how they view him as well. They 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 don't want him to flip either. No, you're absolutely right. They they've been building up this relationship, so you can't have Seth as heel if you're going to have Becky as face. How stupid are they for putting him in matches with Seth? We all said this two months ago. Like, why would they put Bray Wyatt with Seth? Number one, like that's his first real big match. What is he going to not win? So they're going to have to get out of it some way. And then number two was like, well, people are going to cheer more for Bray Wyatt. We said all of this two, yeah. two months ago. So if it leads to nothing, all they've done so far is kill Seth Rollins. They've yeah, completely they murdered him. Now they're worse. hating him. Now they hate him. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, well, how are we going to get out of this match? Oh, I, I know. Let's stop the Hell in a Cell match. Let's do it. That's smart. <laughs> We're just going to stop the match. Nobody's going to know, right? No and they immediately care. got backlash. I, I, that was the first full pay-per-view I watched in a long time, and I really enjoyed it. And then they got to that damn match and just stopped it. And I'm like, why did they stop it? If Bray is unstoppable and they stopped the match because he was getting his ass whooped, what was the point of the match to begin with then? What does that do for either one of them? Beyond us, we have no idea. <laughs> we still can't figure sense. it out. Still just can't can't figure it out. It's baffling. I I don't. Uh, I don't. But I, I mean, honestly, tonight I enjoyed myself. You know, I was there with a few friends. It was a great time. I did enjoy being there. Didn't have to listen to commentary, which apparently was atrocious. So that's that's good. Um, you know, they just redid the arena, so the arena was beautiful. I, I just enjoyed being there. You know, being able to slap hands with people. It was it was pretty fun. You know, in the, in the same way, we also got that terrible, like, you know, oh, make them into legends, you know, stupid line at the end of the night. Ric Flair's out there, and Vic Joseph says, this is a superstar who should be the number one pick in any era on any show. And I get what he's saying, but if they actually did, you know, draft Flair right now, I don't think people would be too happy. <laughs> no. You know, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> so you get these comments, like, I get what they're going for, but. You have him say repeatedly, like, listen to the crowd, and the crowd is completely dead. They're silent. You know, there's no reaction at that point. And the crowd yeah. wasn't bad tonight when they, you know, deserve to react to something. But for the most part, you know, you guys were on the quieter side until, the, you know, they gave you a reason to cheer. So that's, that's absolutely what it was, too. I mean, Ric Flair, I did not even think before going to Raw that I was going to see him. And that was my first time seeing Ric Flair, and I was feet away from him. And that was just a big moment for me being a wrestling fan. That was incredible. I marked the fuck out. That was just a great moment for me. Oh, I bet. That, that's, you know, I, <laughs> that that's certainly something I'd be excited for. It, it was great, though. You know, seeing Ric Flair, um, Cain Velasquez, that came out of nowhere. Yeah, that and, was and a good surprise is, for you guys in person. I thought he was drafted to SmackDown at first, but I wasn't too sure. You know, since they're doing the whole thing with Brock. Yeah. But that was cool. I got to see Ray, and, you know, that was that was pretty good. Yeah, I don't think Kane has a specific brand that he's tied into right now. Yeah, but, you know, with Brock being on SmackDown, I did not expect him to be on Raw. Oh, and then and then the main event with uh, the OC and the Street Profits, Kevin Owens. I kind of called that. I Did was you? like, 
what if Kevin Owens comes out? He's he hates AJ Styles. I was trying well, to think of the roster and who maybe could hate AJ Styles a little bit. I'm like maybe Kevin Owens. Yeah, because I was I was not sure what they were doing with that. Originally, we we assumed, or at least they made it sound like it was a six man tag because they kept going on about this third man. Was that what you thought you were getting live? Or yeah, that's what we thought. We thought we were going to get a six man tag. So the Street Profits came out first. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then the OC came out and they did a little promo before they got into the ring. And I'm like, okay, we're going to come back. And they're going to be like, oh, yeah, here's our partner. But they didn't do that. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Thought I was going to see AJ Styles wrestle, but guess not. Well, I, yeah, that I, was, it was odd for sure. We said what they should have done was just said, you know, it's going to be a two on two match. And, you know, we, we might have somebody who's got our backs. You know what I mean? And then you would have never gotten that. And it would have been the same thing, but you wouldn't have been wondering instead of instead of paying attention to the story and what they were doing, you wouldn't have been wondering who's going to come out. Even though you knew someone was going to come out, you would have been wondering what's going on. Is someone still going to come out? What's what is this? Yeah, because the way they built it up, you know, at least for us, since we don't, you know, hear commentary, it was it was perceived to us that we were getting a six man tag team match. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. y- y- and even everybody knew still that you know someone's going to come out probably at the end. There's no reason to do this unless that's happening, but they could have just cleaned right. cleaned it up a little bit with that shit, and they didn't do that. But anyway, I'm gonna let you go, man. But BSP, man, anything you want to plug or say or anything else where you go? Um, yeah, you know my YouTube channel, BSP Show. Um, Joe, I just thank you for having me on once again. Um, Jake, you guys, I love you guys so much. I've been watching ever since I stopped, you know, making YouTube videos, but I'm back now. Joe, I hope to get you on my channel one day. That's my dream to have you on my channel wasn't just for I, a podcast. I, I was something. on there once, wasn't I? Uh, I was on your channel. I don't know if we did a video on my no, channel. No, you did a. You didn't. You do like a sort of like an interview thing with me, or like are you, uh, we did like a podcast on your channel. I don't I don't believe we did. I know really? I've been on your channel a few times, but I don't think we've done one on mine. I'll double check though. I swear to God you had me on your channel. <laughs> I have to go back and double check. I I don't believe I have though. But right. if if I didn't, I do want you on there. Um if if I was gonna say if I was on there, that's where everybody could start. Then they'd really get to know whatever. But yeah, I guess I wasn't. Maybe it was somebody else I'm thinking of. But um yeah, man, check out uh BSP is going to have some uh, wrestling show. It's going to be uh, on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I'll I'll be Thanks, watching, man. of course. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll retweet Burke. your shit when I see your pi- I saw one of your pictures, but I'll retweet your other ones. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate that so much. All right. Later, man. Good shit. Good. It was fun. Yeah, all right. Peace. Peace out. Peace out. 2K20 <laughs> just sounds like more of a mess. Uh, you know, MK3 Kratos was saying how I was excited they finally added in once again, you know, you can have mixed gender tag team matches and but even if you turn DQ off, if you're the male and you strike the female in the match, you get disqualified. What the hell is the <laughs> how is it how what why why what? The the female can strike the male superstar in the game and that's okay. But if the male hits the female, even in a non DQ or any you know other stipulation match, it ends in a disqualification. So in a one on one match? Uh, no, because they have mixed tags, so you can't you can't do male versus female one on one. So there isn't intergender. Uh, it's just mi- uh, mixed tag intergender. Uh, the, the fucking <laughs> yep. I don't like intergender so, matches anyway, so I don't give a shit. But the game looks like shit. It's just the way they do that. You know, it's like oh, <sighs> female wrestlers can win male championships in the game as well. It says. Whatever. All right. Fuck With you. all the all the glitches Fuck you, and stuff, it, it's uh, yeah. I I said before, you know, I wasn't going to be one to pay for it. I'm actually I was able to get it from GameFly, so I'll do it that way and check it out. But I I was not going to buy it. If I can ever, if I ever get a copy somehow, I'm going to enjoy it actually because I'm going to enjoy all the fucked up botches and stuff. I kind of like that. <laughs> Looking at all the you know yeah the females hair running around the ring and the ref <laughs> up inside oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's want some it. bubbly? Charlotte. Look at this stuff. Oh, can you oh, hear these still? A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Yeah. That's Raw sucks. Lol. Love you guys. Shout out to Jake. Had awesome time on Destiny 2. Welcome to the clan. We gotta play again sometime. New exotic bow tomorrow. Hashtag nerf one eyed mask. <laughs> yeah, that thing looks nasty. At least Triple M got him to play a game. That's right. You gotta get you on Destiny. Triple M, uh, Triple M 177 on Twitch. 
Thanks for the three dollars, Triple M. He figured out. Let me just. I'll make my advertisement my name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Here we go. I'm about to get it, man. Here we go. About to get it, man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh no. Dio Madden is Corey Graves in blackface. Mm. Seriously, look at it. Like seriously, look at his expressions while others are talking. It's weird. Um. Yeah, he's he's Corey May Graves in blackface. Nah, he's even God. I don't know, man. I don't even think Corey Graves would yell, "Make yourself a legend!" Like that's really weird. I can see what they're saying though by some of the calls, or he you know calls things a certain way and makes anime references or music reference. Like he does some of those things as well, like Corey does some pop culture stuff. And I don't get why. This person's always timed out for nothing. <clears throat> I'm not in the chat. And no, I don't have a PlayStation, unfortunately. Sorry. My Xbox has been collecting dust. I got to get live again. Hey, guys, can you not uh, time out LaToya, ja uh, LaToya Wrestling-ology for... Things like sick fuck, that's not a big deal to me, I don't think. And not time her out for uh, other stuff that doesn't make sense. I mean, like, uh, I don't know. I'm seeing her getting timed out for weird shit that isn't, doesn't look like a big deal to me. Don't bother timing her out for anything unless she's like, saying something really crazy. I mean, like, this to me isn't a big deal. Uh, I can't... What, what the fuck is it that she said? Uh, sorry to do this, but I just don't understand this one. Let me see. Uh, I guess I can't find it now, but... Oh, here it is. She's not, I don't think she's really spamming, so like I'm not worried about that. She's not spamming to me. She's writing different thoughts here or there. Anybody remember when you male versus female matches in games? No one bitched back then. Yeah, back in I, the day. I don't really think that that's, I don't think she needs to be timed out for that at all. That's retarded. So don't time people out for stuff like that. That was stupid. Don't know what's up with that, but. Yeah, I mean, unless someone's, it's like you got to be spamming something or like that might not have been the message, FYI. Like, because anything you type before a certain spot, if it gets timed out, it'll time out everything you said in the chat. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't. So think that that's... that message might not have been what you got timed out for. Are you serious? Sometimes, yeah. So let, let's say I wrote five messages, and the last one I said the N word, and that's what you banned me for. All five will be part of the timed out. All right, so well, it'll show all five messages as timed out. So that might fuck? not be the one you got timed out for. Do I really have to go back and look at all the messages? What the <laughs> fuck? It could be like way up where they said something and then that finally got addressed. I'm just I mean, you know. she wrote, you're a sick fuck to Paul, which isn't a big deal. Um, don't start shit with me tonight. What do I have to do to convince you that I'm a woman? Get over yourself. Okay, so she's fighting with Tiffany up above that, I guess. Um, I can't see higher, so. Maybe she started shit with Tiffany before. And she I said, don't know. Tiffany told her to chill. Nightbot will never respond to you. Yeah, Nightbot's a cunt. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I don't. S the Seth Rollins Becky, they Seth Rollins Becky's bitch. That's not a big deal. You're a fucking fuckbag nightbot. Someone said. Uh, here's here's another one. Seth Rollins is a pussy whore face. I mean, I don't know. Like I'm, I don't see anything. Yeah, I, I refreshed it, so I only saw up to that point. 
I don't know. Just don't, Chad doesn't go back. And, I don't think she needed to be timed super out. Chat. Super chat. Let me know if that's Weird wrong. that Raw sucks but gets more views than AEW. Well, it's not weird because Monday Night Raw is a well-established wrestling show. WCW got less views than WWE at one point, too. And they eventually took the Shit ratings bomb. over. CJ Crumb, thank you. Kane Vasquez punches suck donkey dick. Um... <laughs> Donnie M, thanks for the five bucks. Cain Vasquez uh, sucks, don punches donkey dick. Yeah. Donnie yeah. M, thanks for becoming a five dollar ship. Um, yeah, don't. Um, At Shane McMahon level punches there. I wouldn't time people out for dumb stuff, but I also wouldn't fight with my moderators either. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't fuck with my moderators, but I also wouldn't. You know, hopefully nobody times anybody out for nothing. But also, hopefully nobody just starts shit with the mods. You know. If you get timed out, you're back in, you know, 300 seconds. Back in seconds. like 30 seconds or 33 What seconds. else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, you're not oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's I am giving Raw a 6 out of 10 a grade of a D borderline failure, but still a passing grade somewhat tolerable. I like the opening Ramos Terrius promo, the ending, and Lashley's feud with Rusev is so cringe, but I kind of like it. My mods will fuck you up. Uh, Dwayne the Cock Johnson, hit the SML. Ow. Yeah, we have no championship title tonight. I know. Who's the top donator? We'll figure it out. I'm afraid of the stream freezing. To be honest, that's why I didn't do it. Super chat party. So I'm just gonna award it at the end. The LA Beast versus Ryback Food Challenge WWE. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot right, to play that. Let up, me go that's play that. Stanza. What? I said, without even having to look up, I know that's Costanza. Yep. Yeah. Talking about L.A. Beast. He sent us the fucking clips all day. <laughs> funny ass shit. Let me go find it. This is pretty funny. Oh, yeah. Here's uh, Sean's views uh, news on uh, Roman. Oh, my God. Mine was Roman's in maybe, in like, I think Roman injured. And then, like, a picture of him, like, ah. His was full on clickbait. Roman injured and out of WWE. <laughs> and look at that. Roman Arms Reigns out, not even open. injured. Roman Reigns out of WWE and injured. Like, he's not out of WWE, you fucking retard faggot. He's he got injured. Blood on his forehead, his arms, it's all gashed open. And it he makes it look like he got fucked up. And Rain, <laughs> Reigns looks like he was fucking attacked by my wife's period. Like, what the fuck is this, dude? You fucking idiot retard. Even, uh. even uh, you know... <laughs> Grim it's all after this. is a pretty egregious clickbaiter went ahead and said that's goddamn oh, terrible. Yeah, it was pretty funny that Grimm said that, like, because he's a fucking other one. Yeah, look at that. There's there's Charlotte getting violated by the ref. She's trying to sniff her. Shaw, it's like you're gross. Get away from me. Scorpion 69 from Charlotte. The Scorpion 69. Look, oh, he's coming. That's it. He's all out of gas. Charlotte's got the leaky white stuff. Oh, look at that. He's just trying to suck what isn't there. But Charlotte's going to mount him. Oh, now right in his lap. Yeah, Santa Claus is coming early. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, my goodness. Look at him just get right in there on her mouth. What is this? Paige looking like a cum-filled ghoul in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's Paige, uh, right up Paige's alley. No, there's me. That's her showcase. Her showcase should just be, uh, you know, her in-game character, but they f <laughs> use all her porn clips, you know? What, what, where is the, what was the thing I was looking for? Not the wrestling thing, something else. Oh, the, uh, what was it? I forget. Oh, Costanza's uh Oh, yeah, LA, LA Beast. Beast. Oh, God. I don't know if I retweeted it now. It's in my, actually, DMs. I don't know if I retweeted it. 
It's pro- uh, you know what? I'll find it because it's too fucking funny. Like, I mean, he, honestly, like, he looks like an idiot. Like, at the end, LA Beast, when he goes, it doesn't matter or whatever the fuck he says. Oh, God, it's so <laughs> it's so bad at the end when he goes, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, I just retweeted. Okay, I'm going to find it. Yeah, we put up photos it of me. It doesn't matter, motherfucker. Yeah, oh, God, it was so cringy. He was so bad, but it was so funny. We put up funny photos of me earlier today. Uh, this was 1997 when the Patriots sucked ass. So I look like a fucking idiot right there. Little Joe remembers. Look at that dumb bowl cut. Uh, then we got me in 2002. Uh, look at that. And the same necklace almost. <laughs> like it's the same <laughs> fucking, what is going on there? Look at, what a tool bag. Looks like I'm wearing lip gloss. I remember I had to like tie, like kind of like push my hair back so it looked like my hair was short because my hair was really just crazy puffy out everywhere. So I like had to like wet it and stick it back there. I don't know. I just remember that photo. Kind of funny. Oh, the school photo. What a douchebag. Um, okay, let's see what else we got here. All right, so here it is. Oh, here's the clip. I hope... I wish LA Beast would... I wish Ryback would actually murder LA Beast. Is that... Oh, <laughs> Let them go to, you know... Might be terrible to say. Fight for real. Uh, Ryback, Ryback says... Ryback said you can't finish it. Some mutual shit talk with Ryback. Again, uh... I'll, I'll give some mutual shit talk right back to Ryback. I stopped watching wrestling or WWE when it was good. The Rock, Mankind, Kane, uh, the Hardy Brothers or whatever they're called. That was like that was like the last great time of the WWF prior uh, to, the, to like Macho Man, Randy Savage, Ted DiBiase, Jake the Snake Roberts, Razor Ramon. So you know what, Ryback... Bring it on. Bring it on. I, again, I'm not the greatest competitive eater in the world, but will I fucking start training right now to defeat you in whatever it is that you're trying to say that I can't finish? Hell yes. What's finish that? Finish it. What's that? It doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, he's horrible it's, at promos, but it's fucking it's hilarious. So good. It doesn't matter, motherfucker. Like he's so fucking horrible. <laughs> wow, you fucking loser, LA beast. Trying to say that I can't finish? Hell yes. Hell yes. What's that? Well, this guy's a lame white motherfucker. Let me tell you that. But let me. Uh, you know what? It no, doesn't you, matter, fucking... motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he can put up with some goddamn torture. Oh, I've seen him. Yeah, no you know, shit. When pull you pull off to... some crazy shit before, it's... you know the, the the twenty year past expired ecto cooler <laughs> that he drank and chugged. It's uh, just instant vomiting, you know, projectile vomiting. See, I everywhere. think he's a retard, but you think he's like amazing for drinking old ecto cooler. I no, think he's I a just fucking idiot. He's got one hell of a torture pain tolerance. No, he's just damn he, sure. He's just used to Munchausen syndrome. <laughs> That's all it fucking is. His fucking mother fed him all this shit and was like, shut up, honey. And they were rich, though, at the same time. Rich white guy. But mother was feeding him gasoline when he was nine trying to kill him. But it didn't kill <laughs> him. That might be the backstory. Here he is. Swear eating, to God. You know, the, the world's hottest insanity pepper that gives you uh, instant you know, herpes. And he's just chugging milk trying to counteract the heat. It's, it's freaking it hilarious. It doesn't matter, motherfucker. What a fucking idiot. You're trying to say that I can't finish? Hell yes. What's that? What's that? It doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> <It's-> <laughs> that might be... Oh, my God, dude. That may be the worst impression of The Rock's delivery of that I have ever heard in my entire life. He might as well be, he might as well be a new WWE superstar. Let me just get that sound clip. I can't finish? Hell yes. What's that? What's that? It doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> so bad. It's so bad. What a it. fucking idiot, dude. I wish I could meet him so I could slap his face. Holy Christ, dude. It <laughs> doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? Stan's is giving us gold. <laughs> What's that? It doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, my God, Dan. You fucking cut a promo like white people dance, you fucking idiot. 
Oh my god, dude, it doesn't matter, motherfucker. Oh my god, it does matter. Your mother fed you fucking gasoline when you were a kid and tried to kill you, but she didn't know you were Bruce Willis and Unbreakable, so you fucking turned out to make a living out of it. Congratulations, you should be dead. What the Pour fuck? Me beer. You've got a new Pour me a beer. We got a new sub. Enjoy the used. Thank you, man. What's up? It doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> that is a new donation, absolutely. What's that? <laughs> it doesn't great. matter, motherfucker. Super Jack. <laughs> Super Jack. It's like they were rushing it, not making any sense. Um, in regards to what? I don't know, but I think you mean the set show. <laughs> yeah, everything. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, everything. It's it's true Super about everything. Jack. Every last fucking bit of it. Party. Vic Joseph looks like a discount Toby Maguire. Except he's like six foot five, so he's terrifying. I mean, I look like Toby Maguire. Uh, Rene Rodriguez, thank you for the dollar ninety nine. Yeah, I mean, but but he looks like a fucking vampire. I mean, I don't very look very good anymore myself, but I mean, Vic Joseph is looking like a fucking vampire, man. It doesn't matter, motherfucker. Jesus Christ. Man, I, that was so bad that he deserves to have one of his kids stolen when he gets older. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? It doesn't matter, motherfucker. I can't get that out of my head. It's like haunting. It, it's just uh, it's an earworm for sure. Let me see What's what haunting it, me is the fact that Roman's finally got some momentum, and they're going to have him go up oh, against Baron Corbin. A little Corbin bit of now. the That's bubbly. The That's it. That's Want some it. bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. This was an hour ago. I need an eager cock in my floppy white ass. Wow. Yeah. Tommy's grandfather. Well, I'm sure you took care of that back in the day, Tommy's grandfather. Uh, there wasn't, there, you know how many, you, you know how much rope Tommy's grandfather bought back in the day, to be honest? Yeah. He had stock in the original Home Depot. Yeah. And a <laughs> shovel. <laughs> That old like fuck. golden shovel. Hmm. God damn it. L.A. Beast, man. Jump out a window. Oh, that is the time. The road to crown Super jewel continues. Super chat party. Couple raw botches now on Botch Club. Show it, Joe. Botch Club on Instagram, man. Check them out. You'll see uh, all the raw botches from tonight. And you'll even see some botches from me. If you look past it enough. Um... It doesn't matter, motherfucker. Whatever the fuck. He doesn't know wrestling, obviously, but it's I said, It doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> Man, that guy would definitely get his ass kicked in any fight with anybody. I, I just can't believe that guy can even could even defend his wife if she was being attacked. Like, I'm pretty sure. God damn. Despite the WWE draft and the... Uh, Removal of the wild card rule. There will be raw superstars appearing on this Friday's SmackDown. Pour me a beer. You've got a the Hall of Famers Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan will be appearing on SmackDown mm. with their Crown Jewel teams. So Ugh. you'll have the raw stars there. And uh, we also have The Fiend uh, hosting the return of the Firefly Funhouse. Kane Velasquez and Brock Lesnar will be face to face. Roman Reigns versus King Baron Corbin. Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair versus Sasha Banks and Bailey, and Rey Mysterio will be making an appearance as well. That'll be nice when Rey Mysterio. So that's, that's SmackDown. Shit bomb. What's up, Joe? It's been a while. What's up? My pops bought me third Rotix to Raw for the 28th, not realizing I don't watch anymore. <laughs> I'm going to get shit faced in order to enjoy myself. I'll attempt to call in afterwards and give you my perspective. Cheers. Enjoy. Hey, you guys Enjoy bought it. me torture for my birthday. <laughs> just go have a few drinks, you know, hang out with friends, and, and just enjoy it. It's it's a night out. Fucking right. well, Rambo get to mode. See some pyro. I don't know, man. I might I'd sell those bitches. Uh, Rambo mode. Thank you for the five dollars. Becoming a five dollars well, be show bomb. before the uh, crown jewel paper. Too, so I'm sure they'll try and party. Fuck it up worse. It'll be worse. One of the many reasons I am not a fan of the WWE anymore is cause they're no DQ and hardcore. Matches aren't used for storyline anymore. They're now used as an obstacle. Um, 
no DQ hardcore matches aren't used for the storyline anymore. Yeah, they're they're not used. You're right. Yeah, it used to be like you know the two people would fight and then it would culminate to end the feud in in yeah. some big no disqualification, last man standing, iron, you know, whatever. That was that was the the end of the feud, and now it's just like they said a theme pay per view or just a hurdle. Yeah, now it's like they start with it. Yeah, they started that basically started that feud with that match. It made no goddamn exactly. sense. Exactly. They they they. That's why I was hoping it would have been a one off. He takes the belt. You know, if they were smart. But oh, God. Uh, AEW for Wednesday sounds badass already. We got Private Party and Lucha Brothers for the uh, tag team tournament. Same thing with SCU and the Dark Order. Both of those are the semifinal matches in the tournament. Super and Jay. then Super Young Bucks Jay. and Best Friends Joe, are facing it's each y'all. other. Boy Rico, a.k.a. Keith, was it worth watching? What up, Keith? Uh, Brother Keith TV. Yeah, you don't don't watch it. Don't watch Raw tonight. It was garbage. In the main event, uh, one of the announcers yells, make yourself a world Where am I living? Where am I living? Oh, my God. Where am I living? <laughs> ah! Right now. Oh, my God. I want Joe Cronin dick. Give me Joe Cronin dick. Hand <laughs> me Joe Cronin dick. Feed me more Cronin dick. Bend over. Finish. It. I I A A A fuck Bend day. over. I swear to God, L.A. Beast, do you really want to step in the ring with a freak? Because I will finish it. I will finish <laughs> in you. Bend over. Now, L.A. Beast. Go ahead, L.A. Beast. Watch what happens. Shell shock. A uh, joke Ronin. Joke Ronin. Thank you very much, Joke Ronan, for the 1050. One of my favorite uh, donations ever because it scares the fucking living shit yeah, out that, of me. Super J. Super J. That killed the me. The new Star Wars trailer was more interesting. I guess it was, but it was it was like everything to me. I was like, okay, whatever. It wasn't really. Mosh Master D, good to hear from you, though, man. What's up? It was oh. like looking at a moving poster, Super if that makes sense. Super J. Yeah. Joe, if I buy you WWE 2K, would you steam it? Baroquin Lion! Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, what do you mean, though, like... Because I normally just... I, I normally just sim... Sim matches. Leave this briefcase right here. I love you, Broken Lion. I'ma leave this briefcase right here. I'ma leave this briefcase right here. I'ma leave this briefcase right here. Uh, 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 I'ma leave this briefcase right here. Son, run, run, you fat bitch! Run, 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 you fat bitch! Run, 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 you fat bitch! Ah! Run, 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 you fat bitch! Run, you fucking fat bitch! Don't you think I'm a fucking terrorist? Run, you fat bitch! Oh, run, you fat bitch! Tracks today. Hey, man! Whoa! It doesn't matter, motherfucker. It doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> it doesn't matter, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the Mayan Jinnabaddon, thank you for the 1984, the new donation, which I don't even think I put in the description yet, but I'll put it down there soon. Uh, Mayan Jinnabaddon, thank you very much, because that is like one of my favorite donations. Because it's like not too long, but it's like almost 20 bucks. And it's funny to me. So, I really like that one. You've got a new subscriber. Uh, Carolyn Janice, what's up? Thank you for subscribing to the channel. How you doing tonight? I'm sorry that I'm not as pumped up as normal, but I'm telling you, man, I've drank a whole cup of coffee. It's not helping. This raw mutilated my fucking membrane tonight. Really weird. Yeah, it I'm just, this like you said, three right hours right of shit. Oh, my God. It kills you. Right Did you mean to do two in a row? I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. What the fuck was going on? I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. I am June. He might have right did that by accident. He said the run, same thing. Run, run, you fat bitch. Run, run, <laughs> run, you fat bitch. Run, Let run, me know if you need a run, refund, my Jin. Run, 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 you fat bitch. You motherfucking fat 
that bitch Your tracks today. Never run so hard in all your damn legs Yeah, I'ma leave this briefcase Run you fat right bitch. here I'ma leave it It doesn't matter, motherfucker It doesn't matter, motherfucker It doesn't matter, motherfucker Thank you, Mayan Jin Abaddon, for the second donation. I think that was a mistake, though. And if it was, let me know so I can refund you for that. But if not, then thank you very much, you crazy bastard. <laughs> um, anything else, Jake? Uh, I mean, Jake Atlas sorry. signed with WWE. He signed a developmental contract. He uh, Currently, Atlas holds the PCW Ultralight and APW Universal Championships. So... Mm. Uh, Early this morning, Last Word on Wrestling broke that story. They said Triple H called him, and the contract was offered to Atlas at PWG. Wait, wait, uh, say that again, what? So, uh, Triple H apparently called him, and uh, the contract was offered to Atlas at PWG. Whoa. So, Whoa, uh, really? SoCal on Censor.com says this is untrue, but... We'll have to see. He's expected to report to WWE's Performance Center in early January. Seems like it's going to. Maybe it's just a oh, tryout? A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Uh, That's it. I'm bubbly? not sure yet. Look at this stuff. No. Oh, oh. Glorious. A little bit of the Seems bubbly. like it's a full it. developmental deal. Can we just have a moment to understand how godly this Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga game looks? <laughs> I might come in the bar. Oh, God. Glorious Eugene, thank you for the $3. Jesus. <laughs> That it did look like it looked like a Lego Star Wars game. Yeah. It looked, and besides it uh, Natalia good. defeating Sarah Logan, we also got Mojo Raleigh. Yeah, he oh. defeated No Way Jose. So apparently Mojo's still doing something. I miss Mojo when he would look into a mirror and scream. Here comes the money. Oh shit! Oh shit. Here comes the money. money, 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 money. Oh Nate. my god! Nate from VA! Here's something to pump up that six inch or maybe seven on a good night, Joe and Jake. You <laughs> sexy beast. There you Whoa. go. Whoa. Holy shit. Hot damn. Holy Nate's Christ. Been dropping bomb after bomb lately. Wow, dude. Nate from VA with the Hundy bomb. Wow, dude. Like, I'm ready to jerk off, dude. Feed me more. Nate from VA. Feed me more. Nate from VA. Thank you for Feed feeding me, me more. Feed me more. Finish it. It's feeding time. My fucking cock is inside your mom. My God, Nate from VA, man. Hundred dollar bomb. Make some noise in the chat for Nate from VA. Oh, man. I'm pretty pumped oh, damn. up. Now he got you pumped up. Now I'm pumped Speaking up. Speaking of being pumped up, uh, a lot of people said that they enjoyed Bound for Glory last night. Uh, so. Yeah, they did. I, I mean, you know, I was actually going to, I was calling it. <laughs> yeah, you, you were live for a, a portion of time, I, I saw. I called but. the first Battle Royal thing because people were saying they weren't watching it no matter what. And then they were like, you know, I'm going to actually listen to Joe call this while I play video games. So I was like, call it, like calling it basically, and and people were watching and having a good time. Somebody also paid me to do it. They were like, "I'll give you forty bucks if you just like call the fucking Bound for Glory, basically." And um, they they were like, "Because I can't deal with the commentary." So I was like, "Really? Okay." So I did it and I went live. But what happened was in the first match at the end of the Battle Royal, at the end of the women's match, like like Leah like didn't know I was live or something, and she was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And I was like, I'm I'm live right now. And there was something, I don't know. And I was like, all right. And I got aggravated. So I was like, fuck it. And I ended the stream. But uh, the bottom line is the Battle Royal was good. And then Yeah, the call your shot gauntlet there. Eddie Edwards won. And then the women's match I, I saw, that was not. Taya Val Valkyrie and. Valkyrie and Tennille Dashwood should be embarrassed. Emelina. 
you sucked. <laughs> like they were awful. They were yeah, so talk about awful. no chemistry and and just that was botch city, baby. They weren't even. They were like half hitting at everything and missing. And Valkyrie went for a package pile driver and just fell. Like there was everything was bad. Like you, that was so fucking horrible. And after that is when I stopped watching. I still have it. I'm still gonna watch it. I saw Ken Shamrock almost die. Moose saved Ken Shamrock's neck from breaking. Yeah, I with the that. jump outside the ring. And I heard the main event stuff was good, so I will watch it. But you know, again, I'm a little yeah, salty. I Ken, Ken Shamrock and Moose match was the only one that I saw all the way through uh, earlier today, and that that was entertaining. Okay, cool. So I, I I'm you know always been a huge Shamrock fan, and for his age, he's like 54, I believe, and he, he really you know did all he could to make it entertaining. I thought it was a damn good match. Right. No, I, I don't follow Impact at this point. Obviously, they had a good build up video they had a good build-up video i saw that yeah um the women's match though that was a disaster Ugh. and uh i also saw the the tag title match with rob van dam and rhino and rich swan and uh willie mack i think it was yeah yeah so that had a interesting outcome and you know what happened was um I, I've done so much wrestling commentary and so much traveling, and I know that you guys you guys don't know this, but at home, um, for for a long time I was doing like uh, commentary for free for companies and stuff like that just to get my name out there for more stuff. So when I was when I was sitting here calling the matches, Leah thought I was calling like two K. You know what I mean when I when, when I do <laughs> yeah. yeah when I do the video game stuff. And she's like, why do you do that? That's such a waste of time and everything. And I'm like, ah, I'm just bored and it's fun or whatever. So while she was like busy doing all this stuff and having problems with the kids around the house and stuff, it was about time for me to start my gaming stream. And I guess I told her that I was going to start my gaming stream. But so she thought I wasn't doing the gaming stream. She thought I was doing like just sitting here calling video game stuff or, or calling like for a company somewhere for nothing. Yeah. You know, and so she she said something like, "No one's ever gonna fucking hire you, so will you come help me?" <laughs> and I Jeez. fucking got pissed. Like I was like, and so like, because I, I thought something was wrong, so I muted myself. And then when she said that, I just went, "I'm no, I'm fucking live right now. People paid to, for me to do this." Like, and she was just like, "Yeah, right," or something like that. And then I just fucking got crazy angry. I was like, "Mother." Fucker, like, and so I just, so I just clicked the stream off and was like, "Oh fuck this!" I fucking hate myself, and um, I, I just couldn't. I was that, that, and so then I went and I helped her take care of the things that was going on or whatever. Or no, I didn't. I think I did like one thing or something, and then I went. I just went to bed. <laughs> I went to sleep, dude. Instead of fucking doing the gaming stream, I was supposed to do a gaming stream all night, but so instead, I, I there was like the kids were crazy, so I was helping her. Like they, they were just being a nightmare. So I, I, I did something with the kids and. And then I just, I was just like, damn retrograde. Yeah, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> Fuck this. And I think I just figured, yeah, you know what? I am a loser. I'm going to bed. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's a turkey. What if the turkeys hate us? What if they filleted us? What if they killed us and ate our children? What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? If the turkeys ate us, and then they I had to hate us. Penises. The Thanksgiving was a little bit different. Instead, the turkeys ate us. They gobbled us apart. But first, they eat our nuts. And then they eat a buzz. The turkeys ate us. What if, what if, what if the turkeys ate us? Yeah, they eat it. What if the turkeys ate us? Instead of 
Oh shit Lamau I meant to do this one but the brows are fucked up. I was gonna <laughs> say what happens if Bray wins the universal title being on Smackdown lol. Don't see this feud ending well but I hold out hope. Um, what happens if Bray wins the title? Yeah, does that make him a full-time Raw star? I would assume it would because they can't yeah. take the belt to SmackDown. But yeah, I mean, why would that's that... why it kind of means he won't win? <laughs> Essentially, yeah, like what? Like what? If is... They just booked themselves again in a stupid corner. Yeah, I'm so confused by that. It, it just makes very little sense. That doesn't make any sense. I don't get it, man. Oh, yeah, dude, I, I definitely am a cuck. I mean, dude, Leah has kicked my ass. I mean, dude, my wife has kicked the shit out of me multiple times. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we, like, fucking, this is documented. Like, call the cops. Call the police. Sean Hannity style. Or not Sean Hannity. Who's the guy that said that? Call the police. Do you remember that? Yeah. It's one of, um, it was one of those Fox News guys. He was like... yeah. Yeah, call the police. The lady and was like, oh, the guys hit on us. And, uh, <laughs> Stupid shit. Oh, here it is. Yeah, enjoy. You found it? You haven't seen this video yet? This is fucking, she fucking kills me. That guy hasn't seen this. My wife. Maybe my wife. when you had the title? Yeah, when I won the monetize this championship, my wife doesn't fuck around, bro. And then when she won the title, she really fucking... And you can say, and you know you know who else has a wife like this that will kick the shit out of you? Is uh, Matt Hardy. Rebby Hardy versus my wife would be epic. I want it on tight this time, you fucking idiot. <laughs> tight, you fucking idiot. Now take the belt off and put it over my Ooh. shoulder. Why is Hurry this up, fucking fuck. fucking thing all fucked up? Piece of fuck. <laughs> What in the fuck? What are we fucking goddamn Jim Cornette's asshole? What the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with Exploit? Hold on a minute. Fuck you, Exploit, you piece of shit. There we go. I want it on tight this time, you fucking idiot. <laughs> tight, you fucking idiot. Fuck me. Now take the belt off and put it over my shoulder. Hurry up, fuck face. <laughs> You don't even have a chance to win this on Friday. Your fans don't even like it. Wow, this is so fucked up right now. It can't even play the video. Look at this. It's like slow motion. We're actually like way at a different part right now, but the video is all <laughs> fucked. Dude, my computer's fucked right now. Didn't, didn't blow up Get yet. down on your knees. Why? Just get down on your knees. Come on, I mean, what are you going to be doing this stuff Now you for? can iron my clothes, faggot. <laughs> <laughs> The thing that's messed up is it's not fucking, it, but... it's not, it's all fucked up because my computer's fucked. My bad. Hang on a minute. We're going to fucking. Can't see it, but I, I know in my head what it is. So, so classic. We have time, to watch you it. Fucking idiot. <laughs> tight, you fucking idiot. I want to see What's my. What's the matter with you? I want to see her do this to other people. Off and put it over my shoulder. Now Hurry you're up. a real cuck. Hurry up, fuck face. Hurry up, fuck face. You don't even have a chance to win this on Friday. Your fans don't even like you. <laughs> get down on your knees. What? Why? Just get down on your knees. Come on, I mean, what are you going to be doing this stuff Now you for? can iron my clothes, faggot. Ah! Oh, fuck! Aw, little cuck boy doesn't like being waterboarded. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't. <coughs> I can't breathe anymore. Such a bitch. <laughs> oh, oh. I just don't understand why I'm degraded all around the house. The kids think I'm a like I'm a female homo or something. <laughs> now I'm just making you a different person. You know what? You're fucking pathetic. Oh. Oh. Why was there a stack of boxes there? Damn Amazon. Trip. I have no idea why there was a stack of boxes there. And I still don't understand that. I asked Leah about that. She couldn't even give me an answer. Um Yeah, it's always enjoy it's always enjoyable to watch my wife beat the shit out of me, I feel like. People didn't seem to like it. It's like so we had some we had requests for hundred dollar donations if 
you know, Leah would beat the shit out of me like privately for people. Some kind of sick yeah. thing out there, like or something. You just some, like seeing it. Some kind of sick fetish. People want to see uh, high, was high, the husbands and wives uh, beat the shit out of each other. Remember the night she slapped the shit out of me on the sex call? I wish, yeah. I don't know where that is, but I wish I knew where it was because it's so fucking funny. <laughs> That's great. I don't know. I don't. I don't have the video for that, Mike. I'm sorry. I do have a still. This is a still of it. That's actually a still of it. But I don't have the video, and I don't know why. But anyway, Jake, anything else wrestling wise? And we're gonna take a few more calls in a second. I, people are calling in; they want to be on. Um, I guess I was crazy because some of the women are still in or leaving uh, Melbourne at this point in time. Melbourne. Yeah, they had a ESPN Women's Summit there going on. Good old um, Melbourne. Said other than Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair was uh, apparently in Australia for a meet and greet with the fans. So. Hey, cool. I hope she's gonna do. She, so she can well. stare at you while you're eating, and you're looking at Charlotte, but you're not sure if she's on her like 900th surgery. So you're like, Charlotte, <laughs> is that you, Charlotte? Is, is that Charlotte? Or are you a Terminator? So, um, I might put the figure eight on her tonight. She's starting to look like Bruce Jenner. I don't even know, man. She's not Caitlyn, Bruce. They just always look so different. It might not be real, might not be true, but I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Fuck everything. Fuck it. Tonight pissed me off. Yeah, I give tonight a, a 4.5. I'm looking forward to seeing John Moxley and Pac take each other on Wednesday. Yeah, let's let's have Wednesday come. Uh, Slippery bathtub match. Ugh. 215 and oh, 215, what's up? Yeah, uh, Joe Cronin. What's up, boss? What's up, man? Um, does any uh, just quickly, uh, does anybody really feel bad for Rusev? Like in real, like no, I don't know because <laughs> even storyline wise, no, because they've already done I mean, this story I, before. I mean, just from like Lana's standpoint, like she says, he he's like giving away their money. He's not fucking her right, some shit like that. He's interfering with her uh, her bottling contracts and all that other shit and. Not, she's not. He's not taking it to restaurants. It's like, well, she just got a new boyfriend. What the fuck? Why? Why would we feel bad about Rusev? Yeah, now he's a stalker. Yeah, basically at this point. But yeah, that's all I just wanted to say. Well, and, um, they humiliated. The, the point is that they humiliated him, so they should have. They should have done my idea, which my idea was he throws hot coffee in his face, hits him in the head with the thing, and it would have been more to it then. But who cares? Yeah, sympathetic yeah. instead of getting arrested. Yeah, he got arrested. But yeah, basically. Yeah, he's just a fucking stalker at this point. And yeah. just another quick thing. Do you think Sami Zayn will ever win like a WWE title? Like other than like the NXT thing? Doesn't look like it. No. He should be an intercontinental <laughs> he should be an intercontinental guy. He should be in matches for the belt, but it doesn't look like it. All right, thanks. Thanks for taking my call, bro. Yeah, man. It's he's Co you. he's Kofi Kingston. He and Nakamura had one of my favorite NXT matches and now he's the mouthpiece for Nakamura, so I mean that is so weird. Yeah, uh, but I get why I get why he is, but it's just it's it's okay. I mean, their work it's working, you know, you know, a little bit, but it's just like what, like what is going on? Yeah, it just it still leaves a lot to be desired, sadly. Nine one zero. Nine one zero is on the phone. Hello. Hey, Joe. Hey, man, what's up? Um, I just a few things to say. I just want to say I was watching your uh, your morning stream and I loved it. I loved when you did the the rock impression, uh, and you know the strudel and all that stuff. It was funny. <laughs> I didn't know what and I was said saying. Something, yeah, and you said something about like uh, you know people going through tough times and stuff, and just wanting to listen to the, the people and stuff. Well, yeah, you, you, I don't want to be a pussy, but you, I'm kind of reminded like me and me. So I just want to let you know, like, I don't want to, like, uh, say uh, what's happening and stuff, but I want to let you know that you're really helping me and stuff. Oh, thanks, man. So, yeah. yeah, and I just want to say about Raw tonight, um, there's just no passion anymore. It's just like the the crowd is, it's like they're at a fucking golf tournament. There's, like, no reactions. It, it's, it's so scripted. The cameras are cutting everywhere. 
it doesn't feel like wrestling anymore. Like I used to watch SmackDown like on UPN when I was like five years old and I'd see Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio, just a random match. They would wrestle and there was so much energy, you know, the, the stars, they were larger than life. And we don't, we don't get that anymore. We only, we get fucking burn it down. We get all this stupid shit that no one cares for. No one wants, all we want is to be entertained. We don't want to be treated like children. And I kind of like AEW because it's not great. It's not perfect. Yeah. But it reminds me of when I was a kid watching SmackDown. Like there was, there's passion there. Yeah. It's, it's better because the fan energy is up. The crowd energy is up and then the wrestlers are allowed to say whatever they want for the most part. So right there, it's got WWE beat and it's like you said, it's still not, it doesn't, it still doesn't feel like they're just larger than life, but it at least feels no. kind of exciting. Yeah, exactly. Like the AW isn't perfect. It's not perfect by any means. I'm not trying yeah. to suck its dick or anything, but it's, it's got a good, it's headed in a good direction. It just needs, like you said, it just needs to create new fans. It needs to find a way to reach out to a new audience. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. They need to build a new audience, but they also need to build some like larger than life guys, like guys that like are transcending wrestling guys that are so interesting that you have to tune in. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, you're like, where is that guy? What is that guy? Just like UFC. <laughs> like Undertaker, did. Kane. Yeah, dude, it's, it's Conor McGregor. Like, it's like people were like, I'm not, I don't watch the UFC, but like, w what is this guy? This guy is crazy and it's like exciting. And then you watch a fight yeah. and then he knocks somebody out and he goes, take that, a fucking double champ, and, you know, does whatever the double champ want the f or whatever the fuck. And then you're watching that for the first time and you're like, holy shit, I can't wait to see his next fight. And it, it that that's how you get people to start watching shit. Exactly. Yeah. MJ, MJF said something like, um. Uh, he was flipping through channels and he saw like this big guy, this, you know, big red guy. And he was like, well, who the hell is that? And, you know, it's Kane and stuff. And he, that's how he got hooked because he was flipping through channels and he found Kane. And yeah. He was like, what the hell is this? And dude, you know? listen, and, don't and, the, have that. and the crazy thing about that is like MJF is like better than almost half the guys now who grew up at my age watching it. And it's like, dude, I've been watching wrestling since and MJF's right, because my thing was the Macho Man and Hogan, like I said this morning. Those guys on the cover of the tape, I was like, who are those guys? What the fuck is that? And then the second time was I, I kind of forgot about wrestling for a little while. And the second time was I saw The Undertaker debut. And I said, who the f what is that? Like, it wasn't a debut, actually. It was like a couple weeks after Paul Bear jo joined him. And he had the urn, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, And it was The Undertaker and Paul Bearer that made me come back and be like, oh, yeah, that where's that Hulk Hogan guy? And that, so it's like stuff like that. But we were kids, and he was a kid and stuff probably. So, yeah. like, that sort of, like, sucks you in easier. But for adults, like, what's going to suck adults in? You really have to go look at, you know, what WCW did and what, uh, WWF did in the Attitude Era to re to figure out what sucks adults in and what sucks twenty year olds yeah. in. I don't. What the fuck was that? We I don't know. I think we lost you, man. My bad. I hope uh, everything works out for you, though. I know you're going through shit. That was it. Was like <laughs> everybody heard. Everybody, <laughs> everybody heard that too. It was like Arr! it just wound down. Arr! His Arr! generator ran. That was like WWE every Monday Night Raw. Fucking. Arr! Unfucking believable. <laughs> God damn it. You know, like you were saying beforehand, somebody had called in saying they, they didn't get to see much of the Attitude Era straight through, so they rewatched it all on the network and how different the wrestling was and, excuse me, you know, a, a lot of the things like that. They made some, you know, different comparisons. and Yeah. And just like Enzo said a while ago, and, and we've been saying for ages, because now they have to do these huge death-defying moves and stunts to get the crowd to, to cheer when it just used to take the rock in the middle of a match to put the palm of his hand out and, you know, just bring it or, you know, stone cold to flip somebody off. The Undertaker could roll his eyes and, and you know, you didn't a crotch chop got the crowd to go nuts. Now you have to do these these death-defying stunts and dives and huge ordeals to get people to react. Remember this? Oh, Bret oh. Hart spits on Shawn Michaels. Oh, I missed it. Hit the Undertaker. And like it's fucking the boom. Like that. Even that spit is more fucking intense than anything they do now. Like this is just a chair shot, and this is Attitude yeah. Era stuff. But that was great. Just fucking waffled them. Timeless. 
Like, I, uh, there's so much stuff that you can look at that's so much better than now. It's it's almost unbelievable. Um, I'm just looking at gifts, man, because Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart have a lot of them. Mr. Perfect and Bret Hart have a lot of them. Um, I just look at this, uh, look at the wrestling back then, and it was so much more, you know, believable and intense. And it's like... We're, we're like the old timers now, but like when I was a kid and they talked about the old timers, like they'd talk about like, oh, Bruno San Martino and back when this happened and whatever. And I'd be like, yeah, and I would see the videos and I'd be impressed. I'd be like, wow, they really are pretty loud. But the problem is at, during my time as a kid, they were loud then. So it was, you weren't like, oh, wow, that time was so much better. No, if it, it was this, it was kind of similar. The crowd was just as loud. It felt like almost. And and maybe they threw less stuff in the ring and they didn't believe it as much, but the crowd was still louder and just about the same, but the wrestling was faster. So when you watch some of the really old time shit, you're like, wow, it's kind of boring. Nowadays, it's much more exciting. They have music in their entrances and all kinds of stuff. And that's what yeah. I thought I thought in the late eighties and the, in the mid early nineties, you were like, Oh, it's a lot more put together nowadays. And that's probably what kids think now when they look back at, even 1997 and 1998, you're probably like, oh, that looks older. But the thing about it is a lot of times you look back at that and the crowd's better. So you go, what yeah. the fuck happened? Exactly. And you look at the crowd response and just look at the signs, you know, that people would bring. And would you see this nowadays? I mean, would you see a pile driver? Look like, look at Owen Hart pile driving Brett. Like, boom, boom, boom. It was fucking devastating. Like Vince Man probably said that after that. He probably said, Devastating fucking yeah. or something like that. But it was and you know what kills me too is when you really think about it, how certain wrestlers, you know, they didn't get to have that you know, the, their longevity was cut short, Austin's injury, uh, Owen's passing, things like that. You know, Rey Mysterio's been around for Christ <laughs> early nineties essentially with WCW and ECW and WWE and so on, and it just so impressive and then other people i wish we got more time from austin you know when you think about that how really we didn't have that long with stone cold right by the time he really turned into austin it was almost the beginning of 97 yeah and then it still took a while to to get to where it was and then he was out for so long with a neck injury and then he came back he turned heel and then eventually he rode off into the sunset and that was it so yeah, he had already been like that was basically right right as his career la his uh popularity launched. That was the moment when like an injury that would basically take his career would start. Yeah. It's crazy. Exactly. It's fucking nuts. By the way, if anybody wants to watch a masterpiece, I will one hundred percent recommend for you right now a masterpiece, credit to Cornette and everybody involved. Shawn Michaels and Undertaker at the first ever Hell in a Cell. It is a fucking masterpiece. Um, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker at the first Hell in the Cell. I always recommend that. It's not McFoley off the cage, but the match is so good. Where am I living? Where am I living? Where am I living? Oh! Living in America. Bend over. Finish. It. Finish. Bend over. It. Finish. It. Fuck. Debe, it's feeding time. Time to feed on. Deb as beef masters. Oh, God. Feed me more. Ugh. Bend over. Finish. It. <laughs> <laughs> Shell shock. Uh, j joke. Joke. Ronan. Thank you for the... Uh, it's like Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Joke Ronan. Thank you very much for that. By the way, Haku's still alive. I didn't know that, man. Haku looking good. Yeah. Looks great. I'd suck off Haku. I mean, I saw him with Tom and Finn Balor on oh, Twitter. Really? Oh, that's Super where I saw it. Yeah, Super Chat. This draft was BS, and also no more wild card is BS. Uh, well, I mean, it, it just it's it's just like Casey. They're gonna they're gonna have a wild card. They're not gonna have a wild card. They're gonna have a wild Super card. Jet. They're not gonna have Super a wild Jet. card. The part where Leah slaps you is in one of the nineties. Oh, monetize this 90-something? Oh, yeah. I'll find it eventually. Dude, it's so funny because Leah's sitting next to me, and I'm like, I'm on the sex line, and I'm like, uh, would you like to talk to my forgot. sister? Oh! And then Leah's like, <laughs> a little oh, bit of the bubbly. That's, that's it. That's it. Want some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh! Oh! A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's I see your wife Leah makes you her bitch, Joe. 
Yeah. I hope she stomps you on the balls with high heels. <laughs> you sick bug guy freak. Mm -hmm. And no way you going to be on War Power Show. I actually have talent. That's true, Jim Cornette. You do actually have talent. We do have the same initials, though, Jim. I find that very interesting, Jim. I love you, Jim Cornette, and I wish you didn't hate me, but, you know, it is what it is, and I don't know, man. I'm sorry, man. I love you, Cornette. I wish you'd... What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. A little bit of the bubbly. bubbly. Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Z. <laughs> Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Raw is snore. Raw is snore. Sasha's mouth blood. Thank you, Sasha's mouth blood. Good to hear from you. Get a tampon and fix that. Uh seven seven four <laughs> seven seven four is on the phone. Hello. What's up, Joe? What's up? No, I mean what's going on, man? Alright, just two questions. How do you feel about the um Star Wars um trailer? I don't know, it looked kind of interesting, but it really didn't tell us much, but I think they had to keep it that way, so we're going to find out, man. If if the movie somehow resurrect fixes everything a little bit, then I'll come out saying, thank God, all right, cool. But if this movie is anything like Last Jedi at all, or if it's just a big stalemate where nothing was accomplished, which is what it feels like it's going to be, you know, that's really going to piss me off. But, you know, it, the trailer didn't tell us too much, really, I mean... I don't yeah, think. they said fun the trailer, but I don't remember them. I don't remember their being the trailer. All I heard seeing a sneak peek, special looks. So, um, I don't really get that. Uh, it's the last trailer they're yeah. going to release. The last thing they're going to release. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Um. My other question is, um, uh, are you getting WW two K twenty? Um, I don't think so. I think the, they. I, they uh, I mean, maybe, so bad. yeah, if it drops like in price or something and I'm fucking around, I might get it, but I don't think so right now. It absolutely will it, it, drop in price. It's so bad. The it already is scheduled cool. to drop before uh, Black Friday and then Black Friday, it's going to drop to half price. So yeah. literally just wait he, another four weeks. Yeah. I'm telling you. The only way I'm getting it is if they do an update, they fix all the stuff, they update the arenas. Other than that, I'm not getting it. People yeah. already have... Um, the game, you know, because essentially it came out yesterday, the 21st, which is also International Fisting Day, so I mean, there you go. And <laughs> have you, people went ahead have you seen, and they downloaded the day one patch and it fixed nothing. So everyone kept saying, we'll wait for the patch, wait for the patch. Have you seen the hit detection this year? Yeah, it looks, looks so bad. Yeah, it looks like a, just a, like a fucking punch fucking arcade game right now. Um, uh, apparently the net code's better, which is, you know, Fuck me if that's going to mean anything if the hit detection's so bad. But well, I'm going to play at this point. So, um, but Jake, uh, leave you with this before I f fix this mic real quick here. Um, Randy Orton, I, I said the other day that I mean, wow. dude, this guy's just trying to scare WWE to drive up his price. He probably wants to work less and get paid like twelve million dollars. There's no way he wants to go to AEW and actually have to work and you know come up with his own storylines. He likes the shit being written for him and coming out lazy. Oh yeah, he said that before. You know, it just it certainly seems that he's he's really trying to you know just. Go ahead and really ramp up his uh, his stock here, make people think that hey, look, he's interested elsewhere, but that's not the case whatsoever. Um, he signed a ten year contract back in two thousand ten. It's obviously ending. You know, twenty twenty is coming up shortly, and he this will be his biggest payout yet. You know, this will be a huge payday for him. He's going ahead and he's giving himself some wiggle room. You know. They're, they're, they had said that they're going to be end up releasing some people soon. You know, they're, they're going to be doing some talent cuts, but it, it's supposedly not people you're expecting. I wish we had, you know, better details as far as that. I'm sure we'll hear about that, you know, when the time comes. But I don't know. I'm, I'm people that, you, you know, are asking for the release. They're obviously not going to get it. Mike Canellis certainly isn't going to be able to go anywhere. Uh, apparently the plan with him going forward is that they're going to go ahead and give him the Leo Rush treatment. You know, they're they're going to take him off of everything. And until you're ready to play nice, you know, shut your mouth and, and go with the flow or you're just going to waste away. Maria can't do much with her being, you know, amply pregnant at this point either. So they really need to go ahead and 
figure out what to do with these people, but, uh, you know, they don't want him going elsewhere. They don't want to see him go to the independents or especially AEW. They don't want to send people to their competitor. And especially now that new Japan's opening an American division, you know, there's, there's even more competition that's going to especially be, uh, uh, essentially a real competitor. So, I mean, tonight's raw, just the, uh, the live gate for raw, the average ticket was $69. So they made $448,000. I mean, for what they're paying people and what they're doing and in the, the finances that they're set in that much, people say, "Oh, they're ruined." They're not going to be ruined, even if the ratings really bottom out. They're still okay. I mean, they're 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 doing better than ever financially. So there's just a lot of talent and not as many stories. I mean, we didn't mention it earlier, but Alistair Black, you know, he's he's defeating a uh, nobody, Jason Reynolds. I, I you know I don't know who the hell that was, and and that's the problem. They, they should be having him in a, in a feud by now. Does he really need to be showcased in this quick squash match over and over again? We've seen what he can do on SmackDown. Well, you know, it, all right, it's good that he's doing using the black mask once again, but uh, here we go, you know. Uh, at least we know they're not doing away with that and only using the submission, but uh, there's just, you know, a, a point in time where you have to get away from these squash matches. They did it, I feel, far too long with, you know, the, the Viking experience and the Viking Raiders, whatever you want to call them. Um, no one cares about Sin Cara. You know, that would have been a good match. Andrade and, and you know, Aleister Black. Make that into a feud. We've seen versions of that before. They were great in NXT. Make that a go. Oh, you know, a little bit of chemistry since it is his wife. <laughs> they could really plan something special. It's just they have, a, 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 you know, good wealth of talent. And instead we have to worry about which one of the Singh brothers is actually getting pinned in the background, you know, no one, they have this 24 seven title. It's, it's nothing but roll ups and they stopped doing what was, you know, essentially making it enjoyable. They're not putting forward any or posting any content outside of these stupid little backstage run amok things. You know, they're, they're only having people get rolled up randomly or they're having celebrities go ahead and get the belt briefly. People don't want to see that. They were enjoying when you saw our truth on airplanes and in golf courses and, that was making it exciting. The best one they had uh, to me was Drake Maverick hunting down Elias and, and dressing up in uh, <laughs> basically incognito. You know, he was going and getting disguises to go into the studio and try and screw with Elias and get his ass kicked, looking like a Nikki Six <laughs> cosplayer. You know, that was funny. That then actually took some some forethought. Instead, we we get the you know the Viking Raiders taking on Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. It's a three-minute match that no one gets behind, and the fans genuinely like the Viking Raiders. But you're you're having them go against these nobody teams, and and I, I'm sorry to call you know Ryder and Hawkins nobodies, but Hawkins had that immense losing streak, and Ryder hasn't been utilized in ages. You know, let these let these people shine for what they have. These are your tag champs. Stop putting them in these throwaway nothing feuds and moments. It really is just it, it's feels just overly dismissive and, and unnecessary. Uh, again, you know, they, they did a little bit of good tonight trying to showcase Humberto and have him go against the Universal Champion, but the way they went about it was really strange. And it was almost, you know, you know it, Jake, it was self-serving. You, you, say no, you say nobody teams, and I just want to say, one of the things about them is it's not like that they're nobody teams like you said, but what it is is that you can't go to the well too many more times with, like, Hey, we're back and we're ready and whatever, and then they go out and lose. Yeah, that's they've done that about a hundred times with these guys now. Exactly. So they, their stock is so diminished, and there's there's no value left in them because they've destroyed any worth that they've had. Zach Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. You know, Kurt was on this massive losing streak. Zach says, "I'm finally going to get you the win." They get the tag titles. It's it's a, a you know a feel good story, and the crowd starts to get behind him. Nope. That's it. Goes to the, I believe the OC took it from them at that point. But still, you know, they, they just sweep them under the rug. And every now and again, when they need, you know, it, it serves their need, they go ahead and take them back out. But no one wants to play with the broken toys. That's the thing. Uh, we'll talk to my wife. Um, Audible, <laughs> <laughs> audibletrial.com slash JCS. Guys, you, you will get a free audiobook for the Joe Cronin Show listeners. You guys get a free audiobook. When this uh, when the show's over tonight, if you want, do yourself a favor, get a free audiobook, try it out, free for thirty days, cancel any time. Doesn't cost you anything. You help the show out, and you get a free audiobook. Sometimes it's worth 
13 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever they are. It's audibletrial.com slash JCS. Just go there at any point and you will get that uh, free audiobook from audibletrial.com slash JCS. That means Joe Cronin Show. It's just for you guys. Uh, it doesn't mean Jim Cornette sucks. It means Joe Cronin Show. Uh, that being said, uh, let me play uh, some more of the. We got a couple donations coming in. Again. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy shit. Nate again. Everybody else. <laughs> fuck you, fucking cocksucker. <laughs> Suck your own dick tonight. Dick. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus. Wow. I know what it is, Joe and Jake. WWE, WWF always had something to bring in the crowds for each. Aaron, now they don't do that. Just think about it. 80s was actual wrestling, 90s was attitude. There is nothing now to catch fans' eyes. What do y'all think? I think there's something to catch people's eyes a little bit, but it, but again, you're right. They need something not that's going to... used to be. Yeah, not what it used to be like. Nate the from, rock and wrestling thing in the 80s was the big draw. And then, like uh -huh. you said, you know, you had these larger-than-life uh, superstars. They right. were world-renowned and famous everywhere. And you're, but now, you know, they don't have a, a, a major thing to catch anyone's attention. There's no gimmick that you can't see everywhere else. Well, and I want to. There's nothing that separates them. I want to thank Nate for the fifty dollars. Jesus, Nate dropped a fifty dollar donation bomb after his hundred dollar one. Nate, make some make some noise for Nate in the chat. But no, uh, you're right. There's nothing to grab anything. It's like the territories again. It's like all all these little pockets, and there's a small fan base for everybody, and that's what it feels like. I mean, a million people is not small for AEW. It's pretty big. You know, about a million people for a brand new company. That's that's pretty big nowadays. Uh, WWE still has a couple million watching. But when you think about it in comparison to, like, YouTubers or, like, popular things on YouTube, like, it's not even... It's it's unbelievable that there's, there's a guy sitting in his bedroom, probably, who reviews, like, dishware or something, who has more views, more listeners. People Dishware, have, truly. I don't know, like like tu like Tupperware <laughs> like reviews and I don't know, like C D music reviews and makeup reviews and all these things. And they're getting millions and millions of listeners and viewers because people are interested in them. And it's just way harder for these guys to compete with things nowadays. And then with the PC stuff on top of WWE already being PG, now they've got to worry about all this weird social justice type of stuff that's going on everywhere. So then they then they really gotta be careful. I mean but I don't. But I think a lot of their problems are self-inflicted. Like it's not even about all that stuff. It's almost like they're still doing stuff that they don't need to do, that that they could have avoided. They're making bonehead mistakes that they didn't need to do and make, like like they've done recently, like tonight. Yeah, all they're the more things. obsessed with promoting themselves and actually putting on content. Like that article said the other day, it does make a great deal of sense. Right. They're not backing up the promotion. They, they, like we said, you know, I, I made the point the other day. They did everything in their power to let you know that they're going to Fox, but they didn't have anything really planned out for when they went to Fox. They gave you a shit showing. So, and that was everybody was holding on to that. Like, okay, well, that's going to be the thing. You know, once once they get there, you know, they're going to know. They're going to know what they're doing, and exactly. then, but it, that never happened. It's that go around. You know, you, you start to get hopeful. You get disappointed. You start to believe again. You get hopeful and get disappointed. It just keeps going in circles. I'm uh, going to take another call. Uh, we I know we had hundreds of calls like tonight that I missed, so I'm sorry again. I was trying to get through all of them and try to say everything I wanted to say and then play all the donations, and there was a lot. Thank you guys for all the donations. Uh, 216 is on the phone. What's up? Oh, man. I was at the show today, and uh, like when I got there, I was actually surprised by how little people there actually was. Cause I've been going to this arena like, my whole life. Uh, used to be called the Cube, and now it's like the Rocket Mortgage, and it was just like I don't know, I think it was like seven thousand people there. They didn't have the second level really, or the right. third level, and it was so little. Yeah, that's. I mean, dude, I've noticed that same thing. One of the biggest red flags to me was Boston a couple of years ago when I took my son. I think it was three years ago, and it was in the summertime. And there was like no seats past the the first twenty rows. Everything began to become scattered. And I I've been uh, like probably ten house shows in the TD Garden in Boston. Most of them were in the nineties, the early two thousands, and that place was always filled at a house show. 
and I couldn't believe that yeah. I, I was looking at a 35% full TD Garden. Yeah, it's surprising. But they said tonight they made upwards of $440,000. The average ticket was uh, at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse was $69, and they had 6,496 people attend. So Yeah, well, it cost them 150000 to rent the building. You know? Or, or who knows what yeah. it cost them. Yeah. But, yeah, anything else that happened, man, if you were there? If, what, what was going on? Um. I don't know. I think I noticed that there wasn't a women's match on the card. And, yeah. Uh, they were they were like in Sydney, Australia tonight, I believe. Like all the women, it felt like. Oh. Oh wow. That's why I don't know. I don't also, get why was that. I don't understand. Because they were doing some type of thing for the ESPN and uh, a meet and greet with fans. So. Yeah. And also uh, the cage match uh, with Bray. Uh, they pretty much just. Um, Redid the Hell in a Cell match, damn there. They just had him no sell everything, and then Seth just walked out of the cage. It was the worst thing ever. Oh wow, yeah, but people, it's just like he walked out and got to, tried to get out of it. It's kind of it's weird how he's like still a a face, but he's just doing all this heelish stuff. It just feels like it's got to be coming because Bray's getting cheered yeah. like a face, and uh, it's got to be coming that he's that he's flipping out. I mean, hopefully. Um, my little brother at the end of the show, I just asked him, he's like 12 years old. And, uh, I asked him like, uh, what do you, um, like, what did you think of the show? He said, you'd rather would have stayed home. And I was like, that's, that's not good. <laughs> Cause, cause, uh, usually like he's, he's kind of, he's just the huge mark and he, he really loves wrestling, but I don't know. So that this show just felt like the worst show that I've ever seen like live. The wow. main event really didn't make sense. Really, nothing was making sense on the card, honestly. Yeah, it was it was tough to watch on TV. The commentary was horrible. The WWE commentary tonight was an embarrassment. I mean, it was that was really bad. Like the WWE commentary is awful. It was very very bad. Everyone saying it, everyone heard it. Nobody's happy with it. People were annoyed by it. Um, I did watch Bound for Glory 2009 last night. On the Fight app, on the Fight TV app. Um, and again, I will bring out a review for it soon. I know that, it's, that there's so much wrestling right now, it's the one thing I did skip. But I did watch it, so I didn't skip it. I just haven't put out a review on it yet. And I did miss the last two matches, so I didn't watch all of it. So that's why. I'm going to rewatch the whole thing again, and then I'm going to give you my review on it on um, from the Fight TV app. I don't know where you guys watched Bound for Glory the other night. But um, it was kind of dark in the arena. They had the red ropes going for impact. It didn't look like the last couple of years. Like, I actually thought last year's looked better with the yellow ropes and the Slammiversary look. Or I guess that was Slammiversary, not Bound for Glory. So it looked kind of nice that they put that gold and yellow into the ropes and into the set. But, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I mixed it up. But anyway, Bound for Glory, it, didn't, it looked very dark, not well lit. At least that's the way it came across. But it's, that was fine. It still was okay. Um, and again, the first battle over the top rope match was was great what they did. I don't want to go into it because I'll go into it on the review. But then the women just came out, and unfortunately that was not good. I don't know what Tennille Dashwood and Taya Valkyrie were trying to do. But it looked like they both had fevers. They were afraid to hit each other. Or they were afraid to even fake hit each other. It was very strange. And it was one of the worst things I've seen all year. And I turned it off after that and saw some of Shamrock and Moose. So I'm going to go back and watch it again. But, you know, I definitely think that, you know, I, I mean, I've paid for way worse stuff in the past. So it was pretty decent. You know, I, I think it was pretty good. But I'll have to rewatch it, like I said. And, um, and we'll see what happens on the fight app, as we call it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Jake DeMarco is looking hot tonight, baby. He is in rare Shit form tonight. Bum. I can't believe it. Hey, That's random right. question, Joe. Yes. I watched some video of I think it was maybe a ECW house show or something where one of the wrestlers asks Popple to get him one chair and then the rest of the crowd throws all their chairs in the ring. Yeah. What were your thoughts then? Uh, Parker, thanks for the $5. Um, I really appreciate the donation, Parker, and I like the throwback question because, goddamn, back then, stuff was getting out of control back then. 
Um, yeah, no kidding. So basically, it was there was a couple times where it that sort of happened, but there's just the like. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, Houseman oh, with the interruption. A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Just in case there was doubt, the WWE officially buried the fiend Bray Wyatt by having Seth physically find the fun house. I gave them a chance last week. I don't know why I've been let down again. A monkey could book better shit. This show sucks. Um, I do believe you're right, Houseman. Houseman, Sadly. thank you for the three dollars, man. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's dead. He's not dead. It's just, it's just annoying. It's interrupted. It's a roadblock to me. I don't think it's dead yet. Seth is definitely Super fucked up, though. Chat Seth has trouble. Party. Seth is gonna have problems. Where do you think James Ellsworth is nowadays? Deftones too. Good to hear from you. All I know is James Ellsworth has a smoking hot girlfriend. Apparently, he's separated from his wife and stuff. I didn't know that, but he's got a smoking hot chick. And he's being booked at um, promotions again. So that's where I think James Ellsworth is. And I know that he has his own promotion. I don't know how that's going. I know we had James Ellsworth on the show. I had him on my show. We did an interview with him. I forgot about all the people I've done interviews with. A million Dollar Man, like everybody. Like, there's so many, dude. I'm going to be releasing all the interviews at some point soon somewhere. In fact, a lot of the interviews were either on Patreon or on my YouTube channel, but a lot of them are like were taken down or were somewhere else on the old podcast. So I was looking for a new place to launch all the interviews weekly. So I was going to do a new show. And then at the end, I would have like a throwback uh, interview thing going on and I'd have new people on and stuff like that. So I'm trying to find a platform to put that on and it, it may go up on Patreon or my Vimeo account. I don't know yet. I also was interested in trying to do something on the fight with the fight people. So if I can set that up, I'd like to put it there, and I would put the interview stuff there plus the current wrestling show. I'd like to do my own deal over there. Basically, I'd like to do the um, – some people enjoy the live morning show. I might want to bring something like that there, although I don't know if you can – if I can possibly dial in to fight and do a live stream from an app like that. But whoever, um, there's been other people. The BR app is somebody else who uh, I, I've been speaking with, so – I don't know, whoever raises their hand first, I guess, is where we'll bring that to, and I'll be happy to expand the brand over there, I guess, if you want to call it a brand or whatever the hell you call it. Douchebags call their, themselves the brand. Um, that's, that's what, um, actually, that's what Russo calls his. Isn't that what Russo calls himself? And that, yeah, <laughs> but yes, yes, because yeah. Russo called himself the brand, and then Sean's view called himself the brash, and the reason yeah. why he did that was because of the brand, so he called himself the brash. The same way uh, JD is the, uh, off the script, so he called it "flip the damn script." <laughs> the guy just rips. <laughs> the guy just rips everything off. It's almost unbelievable. By the way, I want to say, um, give a round of applause to yourselves because tonight, folks, um, not only has the average listener been here for over fifteen minutes, which is better than radio, but fifteen thousand people have stopped by just tonight in the last uh, couple hours to listen to the show. So thanks to the fifteen thousand. To the uh, with a great average viewership, and thanks to the uh, 50 or so or more that subscribed, what's up? And thanks to Mike Clarence, who became a patron, and Justin ZZ, who also became a $10 a month patron. You will now get access to 30 hours of bonus content on my Patreon. Thank you for that. And I got a couple more donations real quick, and then we'll take another call or two. It's late. Belly, you cunt. Oh, God. Frog off. Wrestling is so bad, I wouldn't be surprised if the wrestlers that can't get released by WWE, they start von Eriching themselves. Oops, to soon, oh I guess, face with, <laughs> face with tears of joy, face with tears of joy, face with tears of joy, face with open mouth. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You are fucked. That is messed up. Nate from VA. He is the uh, top donator tonight. No doubt about it that Nate from VA is taking home the crown tonight. Thank you, Nate, so much, man. Thanks to Houseman That's and exact. Deftones. But look at Nate, man. He's lining them up in the in the super chats. Thank you, Nate. Holy Christ. That was that was dark as hell. And I know Jake likes that. That's right. You are 
fucked. <laughs> yeah. I, I basically bust in on her. All right, relax, Tommy, you sick idiot. <laughs> Any last uh, words here, Jake? No, that's it for tonight. I give it a 4.5. Wrestling in the beginning and end was good, but everything else is just torture. Yeah, it felt like torture, no doubt about it. I know we've all experienced torture before, so... You, know, you we, figured they, they gave him a solid, you know, opening time. It was like, you know, 18 minutes, I think, all in all, past Flair's, right. uh, you know, <laughs> Mike Massacre. And the main event match was like 13 minutes. So that gives you 30 minutes. So you have two and a half hours of shit and 30 minutes of a, you know, shit show. So, hey. Uh, I don't understand why... Um I still don't understand why Mike signed that contract, man. When we were like, everybody was all over him about all this stuff. And he knew. And he still signed it. But also ECW, by the way, yeah. Mick, it was Mick Foley and Terry Funk. I, I forgot. I almost missed this question. I totally forgot all about his question. He donated earlier. Um, yeah, Cactus, I think. Was it Cactus was the one that asked for the chair? Or Terry? Whatever. Either way. Somebody asked for a chair. I think it was Cactus. And uh, someone threw the chair. And then someone else, you know, other people had thrown chairs at the same time, too, because they were all trying to be the one to throw him a chair. And then a little bit of the bubbly. They all just came in. Bubbly? A little bit of the bubbly. Because then people bubbly. probably started doing it just Alistair to do it. Black to win Rumble, what do you think? Uh, Big Daddy KB. Alistair Black to win Rumble. Um, You know, I don't even know anymore, Big Daddy. I don't. I know care. they're already taking bets for it and stuff, and I just have no idea. Because who cares? Because Shinsuke won the bat, run the rumble, and then they 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 ruined. They didn't do anything really with him. Shinsuke won the rumble. I I, I feel like I mean yeah, I, I'm a Alistair Black fan, no doubt about it. But is it going to do anything for him? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Who cares? Because, you know what I mean? Like, we all were like, oh, Shinsuke Nakamura. And then he wins the thing, and then look what happened to him. So it's that's why, dude, that's that's why everything is so diminished. The Hell in the Cell is now diminished. It never made any sense anyway with just having a gimmick Hell in the Cell pay-per-view instead of leading to a Hell in the Cell in a feud. And now you have the Royal Rumble, which means less because, well, look what happened with Shinsuke. I don't even remember what he did. He, I think he took on AJ Styles, right? Yeah. He kicked him in the nads yep. after he lost. That'd be the one. So I remember that more, so I guess I remember that, and that was pretty cool, but... But still, you know, it's like... You know, it never went anywhere. The it, But people were happy, though, that he won because so many other people had won that people were mad about, so they did something where the fans were finally not angry about the winner. But then the winner went on to nothing, and then Vince probably said, like, look at that. See, I told you, this goddamn guy. You give them what they yeah. want, and they crap out on you. Yeah, because Asuka and Nakamura won that time, and they both lost. What the hell was I about to look up before that? God, I forget. I do not know. I don't either. It was something I was going to go look up, and now I, I totally blanked out. Oh, yeah, Mike Bennett. Um, Yeah, Mike Canellis, whatever. So now he uh, he signs for. F when we said this. We we're like, wow, he must have done it for the security. We said that, like, oh, he, yeah, I guess he, he did. Must have needed the money and yeah, take the money and just do whatever. You know, the guy hasn't wrestled a house show in almost a year. Yeah, it's been a long time. What? So he's like doing almost almost nothing until he was on TV again, being like handled cucked like out. cucked out, basically. Yeah. How what? sad is that? And now, now that he said, I want to be released. I mean, why would he do that? Because now... Now they're not using him at all, and they're giving him the Leo Rush treatment. Either play nice or fucking fuck off. I mean, you know? I mean, Sasha did this. Leo Rush did this, kind of. I mean, maybe he thinks... Does he think maybe they'll send him to NXT or something? Maybe. Maybe he thinks that's going to pay off for him. Maybe that's what it is. I'm trying to think what it could be. Yeah, that's the only thing I could think of. Well, um, I guess, Jake, man, I'll let you get out of here, and uh, I'll, f I'll wrap it up here with a couple little things, I suppose. Yeah. It's pretty late. Yeah, well, sounds good. Tomorrow night, you got Throwdown, although last week, you know, you had wrestling that led into Throwdown. <laughs> I forget why. I think, what was it, news came out, and I just 
did a wrestling show and I couldn't get off of it. I think so. Yeah, I it think was that like, might have been it. It was so hot for wrestling. Dude, wrestling's become so hot, it's doing better than my... It used to be that Throwdown and Monetize This would do way better than wrestling stuff. So that was like awesome. Now it's wrestling stuff does better than, than that stuff for some reason. It's weird. Yeah, but... Tomorrow night, tentatively, you have Throwdown. Wednesday, we got yeah. AEW. And Thursday, we have Out of Nowhere. So, And uh, Fridays, you're not going to be on the reviews Fridays, right? Yeah, Fridays are almost a no-go for me, usually, with all the friggin' I don't know why. I didn't know that. Here. I thought you were coming on. So, like, every week, I'm like, where's Jake? Like, But then I, I, I didn't even think <laughs> to ask you. That's why he's not here for Monetize This. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think Sundays to ask you. Sundays through Thursdays, I'm always good. But Fridays, especially, are always difficult with the house. Right. Okay, well, at least I know that now. I don't know why I thought I didn't. I thought for some reason I thought you were going to be here, so I was like, "Wait a minute!" Oh yeah, like, <laughs> got you all messed up. No, I just assumed like an idiot, like, and then I was like, "Well, wait a minute." Uh, but yeah, it's been good anyway. But uh, all right, man, I'll see you tomorrow or Wednesday or what? Yeah, Wednesday. I'll see you Wednesday. All right, well, I'll hit you I'll, up tomorrow. Everybody, stay to sexy. Tomorrow. Have a good night. Thank you as always, Nate, again for taking home that title. Being a sexy bastard. All right, guys, have a good night. Thank you. Good night, Jakey. That is Nate, Nate, definitely going to be Nate's Nate's belt. Take that belt home, Nady Poo. I'm trying to remember when I asked Mike Mike Bennett about being in uh, WWE versus Impact or whatever a little while back. I'm trying to remember exactly what he said about some of this because he had expectations. I don't There's remember some of the stuff that maybe some people don't know about you. Your ass kicked. You know what happened? You. I, it was one of those things where I, I obviously was the youngest one there. Um, I think by a long shot, I think maybe the second oldest was like 20 or 21. I don't even remember. Um, but at that specific tryout, I was definitely the youngest one. Um, and they were, I mean, to their credit, everyone that was training treated me, um, pretty similar to just the other people they were training. You know, it was almost like, all right, who's going to, who has what it takes and let's see if they can go through it. Um, and they didn't really treat me any differently. Um, they would always talk, you know, you're young and, uh, and, and mention it and throw it out and be like, you know, and I, I was just, I was a stick. I was skin and bones. I think I was like 160 pounds. Damn, I want to be 160. That's not the part I wanted. And okay. uh, I didn't want to leave it. We can't. The way it's been going so far is... Um, uh, I would say maybe three, three or four weeks ago, I ended his undefeated streak. He had never been pinned, um, and he never yeah. tapped out. I guess I, I don't know. I'll have to find it later because that's, that's like an hour-long fucking interview. Um, well, I'll find it eventually. Somebody brought it up when he talked about WWE, and it's kind of, yeah, it is kind of weird to, to go back now and listen to that. It's kind of like, wow, man, because I remember we talked about him going to WWE Years ago, we talked about him going anywhere outside of Ring of Honor, and then it's just weird to see how things happen, like not at all the way you, you know you thought it was going to happen. Um, no doubt about that. I look, I look like Taz <laughs> wearing the orange shirt. What in the world is that about? What's up, Brad? Brad in the chat. How you doing, man? Are you hyped for NWA Power tonight? Well, it's well, it's yeah, it's tonight. It's Tuesday, right? Yeah, I'm I'm hyped for NWA Power. I'm ready to go, man. Episode three. And then AEW Dark. I want to hear, uh, you know, how Taz did on commentary and how all that went down. I'm pretty excited about uh, AEW as well. So it's I love now I love Tuesdays because now Tuesdays are fun because we get the NWA show and we get the AEW Dark. So now to me, Tuesdays are friggin' fun. It's like every day. It's like wrestling is taking over every week. It's kind of funny how that is. And uh, I will take a couple more calls in a second. I do see people are looking to call or whatever. AEW Dark and NWA Power. Yeah, what's up, Mike? How you doing? Uh, 100 Murder Man. I'll murder you. Can you play your commentary with Les Thatcher? My commentary with Les Thatcher uh, is on a DVD somewhere. Um, I actually might have a clip of it on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, if I can, if I can find it, I'll play a little bit of it for you. 
You like I, I know you like Les Thatcher. You're down south, right? Or you where are you? I don't even know where you live, but I think I remember you're probably somewhere near Les's uh, training place. Uh, does Joe have AC's TV for Impact? No. Maybe one uh, one day New Japan will partner. Yeah, maybe. Not really sure. Cronin 2020. Yeah, I, I wish I could run for president, but the things that they would dig up on me, I mean, it would be insane. Although I feel like I could be like Teflon, you know, what I mean, like kind of like um, I would run, I would run as an independent, so I'd be attacked by everybody, so I could never become president, because I would be attacked from all the sides and all the corporations, and everybody would be just wanting to kill me. They'd probably murder me, to be honest. So I, I don't know if that could happen. I wouldn't want to put my family through that. I could never do it now because you know then they'd come for your family and everything. Oh God! They everything I did wrong, they'd put on my family. Like I could never do it. Forget that. Even though you know I haven't done much wrong, but I mean, being in like you know doing podcasting for years, doing the YouTube stuff for years, some of the old internet radio stuff, you know, all that stuff is all pretty controversial now. They would have pulled up all kinds of stuff. It would have been crazy. ROH and AEW needs to partner up. Yeah, I mean, I think Ring of Honor needs help for sure. Ring of Honor really does need some help. I wish I could get involved over there too. That's another company I'd like to be involved with. Uh, but you guys can check out New England All-Star Wrestling. I'm involved with those guys, New England All-Star Wrestling. I've been involved with Top Rope before uh, promotions. They're still good. They're here in Massachusetts. I still recommend checking them out even though I don't really do anything with them anymore. Um and then I've got a I've got a friend down in Rhode Island who does New World Wrestling Extreme, and uh, every couple months or so he puts on a show. So that's fun to work those shows. Uh, but beyond that, I'm not doing anything else. Also, yeah, Justin Trudeau won the election in Canada tonight, second term. Uh, so people are all the Canadians are either happy or mad about that. Yeah, Ring of Honor just got left behind. I mean, this was what, what AEW is doing right now is all the stuff I was saying, why doesn't Ring of Honor go do this? Why doesn't Ring of Honor look for some kind of deal and look for somebody and get all these guys in here and just make a run? Um, and it feels like it, what happened was Cody and all those guys got so popular that they ended up getting approached by Tony Khan. But then again, you know, I, and I feel like Ring of, Ring of Honor kind of has a dead ear to the business right now. You know what I mean? Just everybody over there is in their own little echo chamber. I don't know what it is, man. I've reached out to so many of those guys to do stuff, to come on this show or be a sponsor or, hey, maybe give me a match and I could call some matches that you don't have commentary for and we could talk about Ring of Honor and I could break down what's going on in Ring of Honor every week. That might get people more interested. I could edit for them. I could edit videos and edit these stories together and whatever the hell else. Do something. They need some kind of help and they need to... Get out there. They're not getting out there enough. They're really not. They could do better. It's almost like they're happy with, like, complacent with just like, okay, we're Ring of Honor, man. We're Ring of Honor. What's up? Like, they're not trying to come out and grab some of you guys. They could definitely increase their audience 5 to, like, 5 to 20% Ring of Honor. And they need that, I feel like. But instead, it feels like they're complacent with ah, that 5 to 20%, whatever. Let's just take it easy and do what we're doing. It's all good. That's what they feel like to me, and I and I just I don't understand that. Uh, yeah, I'll play the Les Thatcher commentary if I can find it, okay? Devious Dave Rose is here. What's up, Davey? Ring of Honor has... Uh, what? Ring of Honor has been the same... Venues since 2002. Yeah, pretty much. I think they just kind of like, like, let's, let's, we're Ring of Honor. Let's run. There we go. It's not live. That's true. I really think that, uh, um, I really think that they could, um, you know, run a live show on YouTube. I think that's the way to go. I think Ring of Honor should move to YouTube and do it live or, or do it from their website, do it from YouTube or whatever. Whatever they got to do. Do it on TV. If they want to stick with their local TV deals they have everywhere, that's fine too. But have a day where they where they premiere it live. At least even like MLW. ML, I think MLW is live, but it's taped, right? Like it's taped and they run it live. I don't know if that's true. 
But a real a real live show would be really good. That would be if they could pull that off. That would be really nice. I mean, I don't know the logistics of their business and what they're trying to do and all these other things. So I don't know if there's something that I'm missing. Probably is. Impact can't afford a cage structure. You know, as bad as Impact has been and stuff, I don't think that's true. I mean, you can literally rent a cage from, like, so many different wrestling companies, like high spots. I think you can rent a cage for, like, 1500 bucks or, like, 3000 I mean, It might be 3000 I don't know. It's either 1500 or 3000 Whatever. Rent, rent, the, rent the cage. If you, get, if you have to have a cage match, rent a cage. Or go down and buy some steel chain fence and just build your own thing that you can assemble. Who cares if it's like super ghetto and like throwback? At least it's something. I so I don't I don't believe that. Really? They can't afford a cage? That's gotta be somebody just saying that, right? That can't be true. You don't see Ring of Honor do a lot of cage stuff though. You ever notice that? They never they almost never do that stuff. I feel like. I feel like they never do that. Crack out VBI, what's up? Thanks for subbing. How you doing? Impact is struggling now, but th but they're not struggling as much as... I feel like Ring of Honor is struggling worse. And I've got a bunch of people that I grew up... Or that I either grew up around when they were wrestling and I was becoming a wrestler, but... And when... And a bunch of, a bunch of guys that I've called wrestling matches for, all the guys that I've called wrestling matches for, they're all in Ring of Honor. Brian Malonis. <clears throat> you got Brian Malonis, TK Ryan, Vinny Marcellia, Matt Taven... And the list goes on. There's more. Uh, 480, hello? Hey, what's going on, Joe? How you doing tonight? Hey, man, I'm doing okay. How are you? Good. Hey, I'm just tuning into the show only because uh, Ra is about two hours behind, you know, everybody else getting it live. Oh, right. So I'm glad you're, sh I I'm glad you're still on. Um, you know, I, I want to know what you, th what you thought about the end segment with the uh, Street Profits. Okay, so the first thing I, I said about it was that, like, I don't like how they said, oh, it's going to be a six-man tag, and then all of a sudden it wasn't, and it made no sense right. why, oh, we're going to have a surprise. So what I thought they should have done is said, okay, we're going to have a tag match with the OC. And then the OC is like, you know, you guys are dumb or something like that. You know, we're always going to – not only are we going to beat you, but in the end it's three on two anyway after the match. And, you know, the Street Profits could have said something like, well, we're going to beat you, but also we got – we have a, we have someone special – who's going to be watching our backs because we're not stupid. And they could have just done that, had a tag match, knowing that, hey, someone's watching in case. And then when Owens came out, it would have made sense because it would have been like, all right, this this makes sense. But to say it's a three-on-three, six-man tag, but then their their partner doesn't show up for some reason? Like, what the hell? Like... And, and there was nothing. There was nothing completely wrong with Kevin Owens. I mean, he could he could have came out, you know, after uh, uh, Street Profits came out, and I agree with you on that too. But I mean, the pop at the end though, with Kevin Owens coming out though, Those I mean, it's kind of like a double-edged sword there for a minute. Yeah. I mean, it, it made no sense, but the pop at the end, just when when he came out, gave the nice little stunner, set up Street Profits for the win. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's kind of like a double-edged sword there, you know. But that's why, um, like, but that—that's why, like, we pretty much all knew somebody was coming out. So all they had to do was say, "Hey, I let, had no idea it would be Kevin Owens, though." Yeah. No. Like, I didn't. I didn't know it was going to be Kevin either, and that and that was good. I liked that decision. I just wish they had sure. sort of been like, "Hey, listen, we're going to have a tag match," and oh, by the way. Like we're not stupid. We know that little you know AJ is going to be doing something outside of the ring. So if you want to get involved, we got some insurance. And then that would have set up that happening just the same way. The other thing that drove me nuts right. was, dude. At some point, one of the street profits jumped off the top rope for a splash. I think it was, and right. the, the new announcer uh, Dio Madden he goes, um, "Go ahead, kid, make yourself a legend." And it was just like what? That 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 was kind of cheesy. Hey, Van Edwards, Vince Russo's greatest champ, uh, WCW champion of all time. I have to say, David Arquette. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm reading chat at the same time you are, Joe. Um, <laughs> one, one sour one sour thing that I really had about tonight 
was the King Velasquez and Rey Mysterio segment. Dude, could that be any more lame? I mean, that was it, bad. The, the punches, the punches that King Velasquez was, yeah. was uh, delivering to Shelton Benjamin. Dude. A- after he almost fell little, over. Bit, after he almost fell over picking him up. Right? I mean, it, it doesn't even look like they... I don't know how long they've, they've said that King Velasquez has been down in the Performance Center training, but it, it, it did not show anything tonight. That I mean, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't keep Shelton Benjamin up. He complete. It looked like he botched uh, the bear hug slam that they usually do in collegiate wrestling, um, and, and then getting him in, getting him in the rear naked choke. I mean, for what two seconds? What? And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. Where are his? Where is, where the hell are his arms? I, exactly. They're not even around his neck. <laughs> they're 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 not. They're they're like right above his chin, and just immediately within two seconds. It's like Shelton Benjamin's done. I'm like, man, come on. Yeah, I'm 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 cringing to see at Crown Jewel how bad this match between Brock Lesnar and Kane Velasquez is going to be. I'm sorry to everybody who's looking forward to it, but I, I, I'm telling you, it's going to be a train wreck. If I was Vince, after seeing what I've seen, I'd have a shoot. Exactly right. I I'd mean, be- why not? I'd be like, listen, guys, let's just fucking have a shoot. I mean, but the thing is, <laughs> you know, like, because I think, I, I think Brock would win it. I mean, to be honest, so that's good. But also, because, like, imagine if, if, if Lasquez fucking by, or whatever, somehow rocked Lesnar and somehow won for real. Like, I mean, what is that? I mean, I don't know what that means. I mean, but, you know, because it's not like the brawl for all, because, no. you know, I mean, Lesnar's already lost to wrestlers. I mean, Lesnar's lost to regular wrestlers. But I don't know, man. Like, I don't understand what I don't know what they're gonna do. I have no idea. But like, probably why they're doing it at Crown Jewel instead of anywhere else. That way, if it's ridiculous, like who cares anyway? How's it gonna be any worse than what right. Goldberg and Undertaker did? You know? Oh my God! Don't even remind me of that. Um, next, next one, then I'll let you go. Um, Seth Rollins and that new guy that that is coming. So. I haven't paid. I have not paid attention to Raw or SmackDown, you know, as of late or NXT. I've I've been watching AEW. I'm I'm marking out to them right now. Yeah. Um. But uh, this new guy that came in. What What do you think about that match? Well, I thought it was. Pre- I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah, it was pretty good, and he's a good. Um, I've seen him, um, Humberto, uh, a couple times, in uh. You know, like the you know NXT and two hundred five live, just a couple times. But even I forgot about the guy. I even forgot that they had him and didn't. He, I was like, why is he being called up? But I thought I said this earlier already. But I thought that Seth at the end was going to walk back into the ring, kick him in the balls, put a steel chair on his on his <laughs> on his uh, ankle, and step on it, and then go get a sledgehammer and smash the chair on his ankle. So I thought they were using him for sympathy, and then you know, like it would lead to like this turn that Seth is going through like Bret Hart did with uh, Stone Cold right. back in the day. And instead, you know, he got back in the ring and shook his hand after he kind of trash talked him in the ring. So I, I can't tell if they're starting to set up Seth for this heel turn and they just haven't done it. Or if, if it just doesn't make any sense and Seth talks trash to him in the ring just because I have no idea. Yeah. I, I, you know, I like the match, but the whole setup, the whole ending did not make sense. I, I would have gone for, you know, a, a nice little heel turn right there or hell, you know, even if Seth Rollins went to the back, you know, and just, you know, kept locking back and then all of a sudden the lights go out and yeah. the theme comes out. Yeah. They had the you new know, guy. Attack. Why would you have this new guy come out here and lose like this? Like, right. it's just, exactly. like, what are they doing? No, but all right, Joe, everybody, you take it easy. Thank you for taking my ju- uh, my call. Appreciate it. Have a Hell great yeah. night. Thanks, man. Good call. Good call. I'll take your Joe. I will take your Joe. Okay, while he was talking I and while I was talking, I did, in fact, find some Les Thatcher commentary. Now, keep in mind, this was like five years ago. I was not as good, but here's, but here's some Les Thatcher uh, commentary for the guy that asked. I think it was murder, man. Going on. Just watch it. He's become a fan, not a referee. I mean, I can understand it. You can get caught up in a match, but you can't do it. What a powerbomb off the top rope. That could be the beginning of the end right there. 
Huge mistake, it looks like, for Hollister. And he's on his back in the middle of the ring. What a reversal powerbomb from the corner row. Antonio not able to... By the way, that referee in the ring right there, thats I believe that's the referee who's in the ring uh, during the guy with the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> On it. Now that's there's a problem, Joe. He needs to he needs to at least crawl over there and, and cover Brad at this point. And it, it's almost as if he's hurt, you know, he's checking his own noggin because that Hollister actually made it to his feet first, but now the trading blows here. Teasing it. Yeah, Tony, my buddy Tony, man, he's a good referee. He's all over the place. You'll see Tony refing everywhere now. Why did you make me watch this <laughs> uh, 100 murder guy? Here we go. It's worm time. By the way, uh, Les Thatcher was not... <laughs> when I was talking to Les, he, he was, like, not impressed by the worm. You know what I mean? Like, Les is a guy that seemed like he was like, eh, I'm not really into this worm stuff, but, you know, you can't argue with the crowd type of deal. The crowd seems to love it, you know, but, like, Les... <laughs> I don't think Les likes this type of stuff. Wait till Les, wait till Les Thatcher sees fucking Orange Cassidy. That's all I can think about is all these guys that do stuff like that. The guy with the Nintendo, Les Thatcher would have an aneurysm if he sees that guy. He's rocking his world, but whoa. whoa. Oh, man, Congo got over him. And Casanova caught him with a drop kick. Casanova wondering what the heck he's got to do, and he's going to get clothesline. Wow. Oh, man, inside out from the back you know, of his head. When he rocked him. One of the things I notice about this, I haven't listened to this in years. One of the things I'm noticing about this is, goddamn, the audio is horrible. Whoever put the audio together on this should be slapped in the face. That first drop kick, he should have followed right with his second and the third. If that hesitation, he did. Yeah. Water's just reversed. Yeah, let's zoom in on that guy's cock. That's what I want to say. Oh, man. Chuck O'Neill outside. And into the fans. Chuck O'Neill just thrown over the barricade. And now Ryan Waters coming over here. Oh, God, he just threw the bell. Oh, yeah, I remember that. We played this not that long ago, that part of it, like where they threw the bell over there. But, yeah, anyway, that's the extent of what I'm going to play because uh, the audio is just so horrible. And that was back when um, I think that was my first time back in two years of doing commentary. And I think I walked into that building and I was like, oh, hey. And they were like, oh, yeah, you'll be doing commentary with Les Thatcher. And I'm like, what? God, I haven't called wrestling in years, and you're putting me with less, less. Wait a minute, Les Thatcher's in Boston. <laughs> like I remember thinking, what the hell? Oh, it was a fun night, but yeah, that audio is horrible. God damn, is that bad? Anybody else have any other weird things uh, requests of me tonight? Guy reminds me of Falaba from Impact. Yeah, except for he's been doing it a lot longer than Falaba, but that is um, uh, Congo. A wild man, Congo. Actually, to this day, if you type in wild man, Congo, <laughs> I'm actually the third thing that comes up on the internet search. So if you type in wild man, Congo, my interview with wild man, Congo is the third thing that comes up. Kind of friggin' crazy. Wow, that's, that's pretty funny. I've called... Uh, a lot of Congo's matches. Oh, this was a while ago, huh? The mowing, and I was like, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. So whatever, I, I kept training, and then they came up to me, like, hey, we want to. Could have been him in Impact, no doubt about it. Wild Man Congo's a mover, man. He can move around a lot, quite a bit. Um. I don't know if there's anything else to get to at this point. I think I'm done. I think we're going to call it a show. We've been on the air since <laughs> since 11, three and a half hours on Monday Night Raw. I mean, that's kind of weird to do, no doubt. Yeah, Wild Man Congo, bro.
Wildman Congo, he still wrestles now. Yeah, he's still wrestling right now. He's, he can definitely still go, if that's what you're saying. I think one of my favorite matches that I've ever called is JT Dunn and Teddy Goods. I think they had a really good one. And um, I don't know. I can't think of any. Uh, yeah, there's a few. I mean, the Hardy Boys, the deletion with the Hardy Boys was great. Like, that was really... That was awesome, dude. Calling that match with the Hardy Boys was great. Except I had to have Catman next to me calling it with me, but uh, that was a great time. That match was fun. Yeah, it had good build up too, man. I I made the uh, I made like a promo video for it because the promo video that I saw for it, the Hardy Boys cut a promo, and then the Devils Reject cut a promo, and I thought the promos were like I thought the Hardy Boys promo was good. And then the Devil's Reject and Brandon Webb, like I thought their promo was just like all by itself. And I was like, let's put those together and make an actual like sort of like a like a like a fun promo together. I don't know, like it was weird. Um I think I can find the Hardy's promo. Oh, you know what's funny is yes, yeah, so we have video of it. Yeah, here's here's some video of the night. Problem is I'm not. Uh, you can't you can't see me, but I think I was I was on the other side of the ring and the I was on the other side of the crowd behind the uh, stage. This place was 600 people were here though. It's pretty good. There's Tony again, the guy who's the referee during the video game guy. That's Tony P. You'll see him everywhere, I'm telling you. Good referee. Good referee. Hire Tony P. for your referee uh, jobs. Book him up. Yeah, I was over here behind these people, behind the cage over here back there. It was a weird place to call matches from. I've never been in that. Like, it was a horrible vantage point to call. But this is a theater, so like, unless you were calling in the theater booth, which is actually what I thought we should be, because we could watch the monitors. Over here, we had no monitors. We had to look over the people to see the ring. And I remember thinking, this is one of the worst fucking setups for commentary, because it was just so weird to be tucked way over there, and then to have to look over the people to see the ring over there. It would have been better to be, again, up in the boxes or back in the sound room with the monitors, because the monitors were back there. Um... Or, or we should have been like near ring, but there was no, there wasn't a lot of ringside room. In fact, I remember one time Jimmy Hart jumped out of the ring, and the the they the cage the um the barricade was so damn close to the ring that like fucking old Jimmy Hart's jumping out of the ring, and he jumped out of the ring. He don't give a damn with his megaphone, and his legs got caught up on the on the barricade, and he fell over and got right back up. But it was like Jesus, even his like a, this old little Jimmy Hart just fucking got stuck on the. So I was like, if somebody goes over the top rope on that wrong side, they're going to get destroyed. But on the opposite side, there was like eight feet until the fans, until it drops down into the theater area. So like you had all that room there. So it, if there was any outside spots to do or suicide dives, you know, you had to do it in the front of the ring because anywhere else and you would have killed yourself probably. But uh, Jeff was on acid. He actually wasn't, man. He was so... uh. He was pretty good, man. It was the old Bucks versus somebody else. And the, not the new old Bucks. It was like Bob, Brutal Bob Evans and Craig Costa started calling himself the old Bucks. And that was like four years ago or like whatever, 2016. So 2016 was the year of the Hardys, man, the year of the deletions. I had such a blast. <laughs> Van Edwards, that's funny, man. Abdul the Butcher. All right. I think I'm done. I think we're ready to go. Mm. Mm. Good night. Pieces 
this is my last resort Suffocation, no breathing Don't give a fuck if I cut my arm bleeding <laughs> I'm fucking kidding um, What was it, Mike? No, it was, it was uh, Ash who was like Papa Roach, last resort <laughs> What? <laughs> well, there you go, man That's about the extent that I'm going to do that Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. I'll see you tomorrow. It'll be fun. We'll have a good time. We'll rub each other down. And uh, hit me up on Patreon if you're not patrons already. It's patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Hit me up over there and uh, check out all the other stuff. Uh, good night. If you guys want to hear what I thought about Raw and all this other BS, make sure you guys go back and listen to the show. Uh, this is, We're ending the show now. See you later. I don't know. It's fucking around. I don't know what the I don't remember the lyrics. It's fucking around. I don't know. It's not. I don't have the lyrics in front of me. You have the lyrics. God damn it. <laughs> Good night. Why does this guy want me to play Papa Roach so much? What the hell is this? Patronize this. I should call it that. NWA Power tomorrow night or tonight, baby. NWA Power and AEW. Dark episode, uh, episode three. I'm ready for it, baby. And then I'll be ready for Wednesday. Getting wet for Wednesday, baby. Let's go. We'll go out with the Papa Roach song. How about that? Suffocation, no breathing Don't give a fuck if I cut my arm bleeding Do you even care if I die bleeding? Would it be wrong, would it be right? If I took my life tonight Chances are that I might Mutilation out of sight And I'm gonna play suicide Cause I'm losing my sight I'm losing my mind I wish somebody would tell me I'm fine I'm losing my sight I'm losing my mind I wish somebody would tell me I'm fine I never realized your mom jerking slapping on your mother's bum i'm really getting out of here bye i never realized i was spread too thin till it was too late empty within hungry feeding chaos and living in sin downward spiral where do i begin it all started when i fucked my mother no love for myself and i'm fucking my brother searching 